Magic Doctor, CEO Lady's Humble Husband. Chapter 3626 to Chapter 3650. Have fun reading as well as listening. To my esteemed viewers and subscribers, welcome to our little corner of the internet, where the magic of storytelling comes alive through audiobooks. Today, I'm thrilled to bring you an update on our journey thus far. Firstly, I want to express my deepest gratitude for your unwavering support as we've delved into the world of web novels. Together, we've embarked on adventures, traversed distant lands, and befriended unforgettable characters. And guess what? We've already almost caught up to the raw of this novel. The raw, as of the moment, is around chapter 3900 plus, and the status of this novel is still ongoing. Chapter 3626 Formerly in charge of this group of students is Su Qingye. She stood expressionless in front of everyone. Her gaze glanced at Xia Ming Lei and Qin Fei as they approached, and her eyes flickered, preparing to come and greet them. However, Xia Ming Lei directly used telepathy to convey, no need to be polite. According to the normal process, let's begin the assessment. Yes, Su Qingye nodded gently, then began the assessment. Chen Fei and Xia Ming Lei stood under the eaves, watching the assessment from afar. The first thing was to test the level of cultivation. These students stepped forward one by one to be tested. Dian Realm, Nanlin Country, Su Jin, 46 years old, at the 7th level of Yuan Body Realm. Da Xia Realm, Luohan Valley, Jin Yu, 42 years old, at the 8th level of Yuan Body Realm. Earth, USA, Paliki, 37 years old, at the 8th level of Yuan Body Realm. The students went through the test one by one, while Chin Fei watched quietly. He observed that these students were all under 50 years old, and their cultivation levels were roughly between the 6th and 9th levels of Yuan Body Realm. Beside him, Xia Ming Lei took the opportunity to introduce to Chin Fei, after the connection between the three realms and Daming Prefecture, Due to the nourishment of spiritual energy, the lifespan and cultivation limits of the residents have been improved. Basically, their average lifespan now can reach around 150 years. The strongest group of cultivators have also basically reached the 7th or 8th level of Yuan Soul Realm, and some even have the potential to break through to Yuan Fetus Realm. So, this time we have set the age limit for students under 50 years old, and their cultivation levels are set at the fifth level of Yuan Body Realm or above. Those who meet the standard are the young talents from various realms. Chin Fei nodded slightly after hearing this, recalling his situation on Earth before. At first, the entire Earth was divided into the four realms of Heaven, Earth, Mystery, and Yellow. Above this were demigods and divine level experts, with only a few of them. And even the so-called peak martial artists on Earth at that time, when converted, were barely at the level of Yuan Body Realm. Later, Chen Fei battled at the passage and slept for three years. Because of the leakage of spiritual energy during that time, martial arts flourished on Earth, and a group of experts emerged. Most of them had reached the seventh level of martial arts, which is the Yuan Body Realm. Among them, the top experts had reached the 8th level, corresponding to the Yuan Soul Realm. Chen Fei remembered that when he left Earth, his teacher Xin Yuan Jia Shan, the Chinese god of war Su Jun Shan, and others like Zhu Kuei Shan and Song Shu were all at the Yuan Body Realm. And the strongest at that time was the Lord of Qingmu Palace from the Forbidden Island, who had reached the 3rd level of Yuan Soul Realm. While Chen Fei was pondering, a loud voice caught his attention. Earth, China, Zhu Tai, 34 years old, at the first level of Yuan Soul Realm. Instantly, the gazes of everyone present turned towards him, showing surprise in their eyes. Even Xia Ming Lei stood up and released his energy to investigate. Then, Xia Ming Lei looked at Shen Fei and smiled. Your hometown has produced a good talent. Why don't you go take a look? Chin Fei smiled lightly. Let's talk after the assessment is over. So, the assessment continued, and around a hundred students all completed the tests. Among them, only three students had reached the Yuan Soul Realm, including Zhu Tai from China. And among these three, the other two were 48 years old, 
Comparatively, Zhu Tai, who was only in his 30s or 40s, undoubtedly had the most potential. The assessment continued, and next was practical combat practice. Su Qingye called over around a hundred guards from the Wang family who were already prepared, and they sparred with these students respectively. These guards, being able to enter the Wang family, naturally had considerable strength. Most of them had cultivation levels of at least the fourth level of Yuan's soul realm, so sparring with these students was more than adequate. The results were mostly as expected. Most students couldn't last even ten moves against the guards and were quickly defeated. Those with some strength could hold on for 20 moves, which was already considered good. And the three Yuan Soul Realm students who received much attention all managed to last 50 moves against the guards. Even the youngest Jutai persisted for over a hundred moves before finally being defeated. With this, Jutai undoubtedly became the top student among this group, immediately attracting the attention of many. Some couldn't contain their excitement and wanted to directly recruit him as a disciple on the spot, bringing this promising talent under their wing. Seeing this, Xiaoming Lei looked at Chen Fei and said with a smile, That kid, if you want him, I'll leave him to you. Chen Fei responded, We should also consider his own opinion. Then let's go ask him. Xiaoming Lei stood up and walked over. Chen Fei followed suit. Seeing this, Su Qingye immediately bowed respectfully, Greetings, Lord Xia and Master Chen. The guards also quickly stood in salute. Seeing the situation, the students were both excited and nervous. Is that our top leader here? Could it be? Is the top leader really coming to see us? Don't move recklessly, we can't leave a bad impression on the leader. Xia Ming Lei scanned the students and smiled gently, you are all outstanding talents of the future. I hope that during your time in Daming Prefecture, you will make progress in your studies and cultivation. So today, you can each choose a teacher to study and practice with during this time in Daming Prefecture. Upon hearing this, the students were suddenly excited. Some bold ones even shouted to Xia Minglei, Lord Xia, can we choose you as our teacher? Xia Minglei smiled. As long as you meet the requirements, naturally you can. However, my expectations for students are not low. With this said, everyone understood that it was almost impossible to directly become Xiaoming Lei's disciple. So, everyone's gaze could only turn to others present. Of course, among those present, there were some who had their own favorite students and took the initiative to approach them. For example, this guy Chen who somehow rushed into the crowd and grabbed a chubby kid, wanting to be his teacher. Chen Fei went straight to Zhu Tai. At this moment, Zhu Tai was quite popular, surrounded by many people clamoring to take him as a disciple. However, when they saw Chen Fei coming over, these people consciously stepped aside. Without wasting words, Chen Fei directly asked Zhu Tai, Are you willing to be my student? Ah, Zhu Tai was stunned for a moment, then asked, Are you? Before Chen Fei could speak, Chen Hu, who had just grabbed the chubby kid, hurried over, Kid, this is my boss. My boss Chen Fei is a renowned genius in Daming Prefecture. He is strong, with cultivation at the Yuan Fetus Realm, capable of defeating masters at the Control Realm. Moreover, my boss is also a well-known alchemist. He is at least at the level of an 8-star alchemist. Furthermore, our Prefecture Lord Tian Ming and Deputy Prefecture Lord Xia Ming Lei have close relationships with our boss. Also, the girl who just assessed you, Su Qingye, is also my boss's student. So, what are you hesitating for, kid? Hurry up and agree. After this introduction, not only Zhu Tai was shocked, but other students were also astonished and envious. After a moment of hesitation, Zhu Tai immediately bowed and saluted. Student Zhu Tai pays respect to the teacher. Chapter 3627 Chen Fei brought his student Zhu Tai back to his own mansion, found a room for him, settled him in, and then allowed him to move around freely to familiarize himself with the environment here. After Zhu Tai took a tour of Chen Fei's mansion and learned more about it, he was even more surprised. 
because his teacher, described by everyone just now, was even more amazing than he had imagined and held a high position throughout the entire Daming Prefecture. For a moment, Zhu Tai was both joyful and worried. In the evening, when Chen Fei came to see him, Zhu Tai couldn't help but ask, Teacher, with your identity and status, why would you take me as your student? After all, I am just a humble cultivator from a low-level small world. In Daming Prefecture, in the elemental realm, there should be many cultivators with more talent than me. Chen Fei paused for a moment, then smiled and said, Zhu Tai, don't underestimate yourself. Your talent, even in the elemental realm, is already quite good. And Earth is not some low-level small world, and Earth's martial artists are not humble cultivators. Because I also come from Earth. Ah, this. Zhu Tai was truly shocked. He had never expected that the person in front of him, a prominent figure in Daming Prefecture, actually came from Earth. Teacher, are you really from Earth? Chen Fei directly switched to Mandarin and smiled at Zhu Tai, saying, Not only am I from Earth, but I am also from China. Moreover, I've only been in the elemental realm for less than 40 years, so I can't be considered here for long. Hearing Chen Fei speak fluent Mandarin and his following words, Zhu Tai suddenly realized something, and his expression changed drastically. Chinese, over 40 years, formidable strength. Teacher, you, could you be the great figure from our Earth's legends, Master Chen? Hearing this familiar title again, Chen Fei couldn't help but nod slightly. Before I came here, many people called me that. Master Chen, you are really incredible. Zhu Tai's face was full of joy. Then he slapped his head in self-blame. Teacher, your surname is Chen, and you also come from Earth. I should have thought of this earlier. I'm too stupid not to have realized it earlier. Chen Fei waved his hand and said, When I left Earth, you weren't even born yet. It's normal not to be familiar with it. Teacher, I want to inform my companions from the Wawu Pavilion. They must also be eager to meet you. Zhu Tai was still very excited. Chen Fei thought for a moment, then nodded and said, All right, then bring them all here for dinner. This can also be considered as welcoming the fellow countrymen from my hometown. At dinner, around the dining table. Chen Fei looked at Zhu Tai and the other three with a gentle smile on his face and started chatting with them. The other three, upon learning that Chen Fei was the famous master Chen from Earth, couldn't help but become extremely excited, discussing various past events of master Chen and the teachings about master Chen in the Huawu Pavilion. Chen Fei also inquired about the current situation on Earth, especially regarding martial arts cultivation. However, when it came to this topic, the responses from the four made Chen Fei slightly melancholic. As a result, among the first batch of students, there were a total of 32 people from Earth. Among them, only Zhu Tai and his three companions came from the Huawu Pavilion. The other 20-plus people were from other martial arts forces on Earth. When Chen Fei left, the Wawu Pavilion was undoubtedly one of the top martial arts forces on Earth, leading by a wide margin. Now, several decades have passed, and although the Wawu Pavilion is still top-notch, it has lost its leading position from the beginning and can even be considered second-rate now. More martial forces, such as the Holy Knight Corps, the Spiritual Light Society, and the Bitter Sea Sect, have risen rapidly and developed quickly in the past 30 to 40 years. Then, Chen Fei asked about some internal matters of the Huawu Pavilion. From Zhu Tai, he learned that the older generation of Huawu Pavilion's high-level members, such as Xin Yuan Jia Shan, the Lord of Qingmu, Song Shu, Li Zhantian, and others, have retired and left their positions. The current Lord of the Huawu Pavilion is Mu Yuching, the daughter of the Lord of Qingmu. She hails from the Forbidden Island and has always been more powerful. When Chen Fei left, Mu Yuching's cultivation had reached the Triple Realm of Elemental Soul. It's only fitting for her to take on the role of the Pavilion Lord now. The two Deputy Pavilion Lords are Chen Xiling and Zhuo Qingyu. This surprised Chen Fei himself. But upon further thought, it made sense. Chen Xiling is his junior marshal sister, 
who initially learned martial arts with Xin Yuan Jiaoshan. Her talent has always been excellent, but she was too playful before and unwilling to work hard, so her progress was slow in the later stages. With a little more effort, she would surely progress rapidly. As for Zhu Qingyu, she was the only formal disciple Chen Fei had accepted. Her talent is outstanding, with a Qingmu spirit body constitution, and she practices the wood intent technique at a remarkably fast pace. Coupled with Zhu Qingyu's tenacious personality and diligent training, her progress is also expected. Under these three pavilion lords, many elders are familiar names to Chen Fei. Lin Lu, Lin Hu, siblings, Qin Song, Jiang Hao, and so on, were all young talents whom Chen Fei had high hopes for back then. Overall, the younger generation of leaders in the Huawu Pavilion are competent, and they can be considered top-notch. However, compared to other martial forces, they no longer have the absolute leading edge as the previous generation did. Moreover, as the Huawu Pavilion continues to grow larger and more cumbersome, its development speed inevitably slows down, eventually being surpassed by other martial forces, which is also normal. After asking these questions, Chen Fei couldn't help but think of the faces he hadn't seen on Earth for a long time. He couldn't help but ask, by the way, have you heard any news about Lin Xiuhuan, the president of the Autumn Group? At this mention, Zhu Tai paused slightly and said, I have heard of this name. She's a very powerful figure. However, President Lin keeps a low profile, and there's very little information about her. We've only heard the name. Uh. Chen Fei felt a little disappointed, but he quickly concealed his disappointment, put on a smile, and continued chatting with Zhu Tai and the others. After dinner, he sent Zhu Tai away. Alone in his bedroom, Chen Fei sat on the edge of the bed. His thoughts seemed to be pulled by an invisible thread, unable to help but recall the bits and pieces of his time on Earth. For a moment, Chen Fei felt a wave of sadness welling up from the bottom of his heart, and at some point, a tear appeared at the corner of his eye. I miss home. I miss my family. Wiping away the tear at the corner of his eye, Chen Fei muttered to himself, I've been away for so long, maybe I should go back home for a visit. The next day, with a slight sense of apprehension, Chen Fei found Xiaoming Lei and proposed his idea of returning to Earth for a while. If you want to go back, just go. What's there to hesitate about? Xiaoming Lei said. But everyone is busy, and I'm... Chen Fei said with some concern. Xiaoming Lei patted Chen Fei on the shoulder and said loudly, Stop overthinking, kid. While you are important to our Daming Prefecture, you're not so important that if we lose you, Daming Prefecture won't function anymore. All right, go home if you miss it. I'll arrange the passage for you. Master, I thank you. Chen Fei nodded gratefully. Stop being so polite. Go get ready, Xiaoming Lei said loudly. Chapter 3628 Outside the western city of Daming Prefecture, there is a vast expanse of lush green grass, with a tall and verdant tree standing proudly upon it. The tree emits a shimmering green luster, exuding layers of spiritual energy. Surrounding the big tree is a circle of walls several meters high, emitting a special glow, evidently forming a formation, enclosing the big tree. Only a roughly five meter wide entrance is opened in the front. Before the entrance, several soldiers with solemn faces guard here. In the outermost circle, there is a bustling crowd gathered at the entrance. Without a doubt, this big tree is the Tianyin Divine Tree responsible for connecting Daming Prefecture and Earth. The crowd at the entrance of the wall is composed of people who wish to travel to Earth through the Tianyin Divine Tree. Because opening the passage requires a considerable amount of spiritual energy and involves certain risks. Therefore, the Tianyin Divine Tree opens the passage only once every three months, sending people over in batches. Today marks the opening day of the passage after these three months, hence the gathering of many people here. Dressed casually, Chen Fei is currently blending in with this crowd. 
Originally, Xiaoming Lei intended to arrange a special passage for him to return to Earth directly. However, since the opening of the passage was only two days away at that time, Chen Fei chose not to trouble him and opted to wait here with the ordinary people. As he waits, Chen Fei listens to the lively chatter of the people around him. The majority here are merchants, dealing with goods between Earth and Daming Prefecture, making profits from the price difference. The remaining minority are those who haven't had much success and are preparing to try their luck on Earth, hoping to seize the opportunity for a turnaround. After all, even though the passage has been open for over 30 years, for most of the people in Daming Prefecture, in their minds, places like Earth, Dian Realm, and Dashia Realm are all backward little worlds. If there wasn't a necessity, the vast majority of people in Daming Prefecture would still prefer not to go to these places. It seems that the integration of different worlds still takes time. Chen Fei couldn't help but sigh inwardly. Just then, a commotion arises from the back of the crowd. Chin Fei turns his head to see a group of burly men, about 15 or 16 in number, striding over mightily. This group of people all look sturdy and robust, with sharp eyes, various scars on their bodies, and weapons hanging from their waists, clearly not to be trifled with. Seeing this group approaching, the people waiting at the entrance show expressions of fear, avoiding them one after another. Some newcomers, puzzled, mutter softly, who are these people, so domineering. The experienced ones immediately speak up to warn them. Don't speak nonsense, these are members of the beast hunting team. Remember, after arriving on Earth, don't provoke them, keep your distance. The beast hunting team, are they very powerful? Some newcomers still don't understand. The elders quickly explain in a low voice. You don't know. These people are not ordinary. Thirty years ago, when the various realms had just begun to connect, everyone was still filled with fear and were hesitant to venture to other worlds. At that time, a group of desperados emerged from the wilderness, the first to sign up for the attempt to go to Earth. As a result, they benefited greatly from this operation. They hunted down several rare monsters on Earth and acquired many other valuable items, making a big profit upon their return. Subsequently, they began recruiting and expanding, forming the beast hunting team as it is today. They practically monopolized 70% of the trade between our Daming Prefecture and Earth. Of course, that's just the surface. There are rumors that, beneath their public facade, the beast hunting team is involved in some shady dealings, making even more money. They're even said to have connections with certain high-ranking individuals. So, you know, when you encounter them, don't cause trouble, it's best to avoid them. Upon hearing this, the newcomers immediately showed fear and stepped aside. Meanwhile, Chen Fei furrowed his brow. Before he could say anything, a group of people from the beast hunting team had already arrived in front of them. One rugged man with a twisted mouth, without any courtesy, reached out and pushed Chin Fei aside, then took his place. Seeing this, Chin Fei exerted a bit of force, pushing the rugged man back, and calmly said, This is my spot. Uh. The rugged man was taken aback, then glared at Chin Fei and threatened, Kid, what do you mean? Don't you know who we are? Chin Fei remained expressionless and coldly replied, I don't care who you are, but this is my spot, and I won't allow anyone to take it. You. The rugged man suddenly became furious, rolled up his sleeves, ready to act. Seeing this, the guards at the entrance walked over and sternly shouted, The passage is about to open, behave yourselves. A man with a mustache walked up to the guards and smiled, Uncle Huang, we're just messing around. The soldier gave the mustached man a stern look and reminded, Hu Bajin, don't play tricks in front of me. Follow the rules if you want to go to Earth, don't cause trouble. Yes, 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 Uncle Huang. 
Hubaji nodded repeatedly, then led his dozen or so men behind Shen Fei and obediently lined up. Just then, the Tianin divine tree inside the stone wall emitted a dazzling light. The guard announced, the passage is open. Everyone take your tokens and line up to enter the passage. Entering the passage, accompanied by a dazzling light and a whirlwind, Shen Fei was plunged into darkness. Then, after an unknown amount of time, faint light appeared, and in front of Chen Fei, there was a circular bright exit. He walked toward it, feeling his surroundings brighten, and a vast expanse of land appeared before him. This is... Chen Fei took a deep breath and surveyed the scenery around him. Behind him were also three towering Tianyin Divine Trees. They should be the Tianyin Divine Trees leading to Daiming Prefecture, Dian Realm, and Da Xia Prefecture in the Earth Yuan Realm. At this moment, apart from the people near his tree, others were also emerging from the other two trees as the light flickered. It seems that there are still many people traveling between Earth and other realms. Looking toward the outer perimeter, there was a tall building that looked somewhat like an urban terminal. Near the exit, there were staff wearing light green uniforms, smiling as they ushered Shen Fei and the others into the terminal. After observing for a moment, Chen Fei noticed that these staff members were quite polite to those coming from the outside world. Especially towards this group of guests from Daiming Prefecture, they were even more respectful, subtly trying to please them. As for the people from the beast hunting team, they seemed accustomed to such treatment, laughing and joking loudly without restraint. One of them, the rugged man with a twisted mouth, even shamelessly reached out and groped towards a young and beautiful staff member. Hey girl, how about I give you a spirit stone and we have some fun at the hotel? Chapter 3629 Guest, I, I. The young girl's face flushed red all of a sudden, but she didn't dare to resist the rugged man with the twisted mouth, so she could only cast a pleading look towards her supervisor. However, the supervisor simply turned a blind eye, completely ignoring her. On the other hand, Hubajin, with his mustache, gave the rugged man a displeased look and said, Wolf soldier, don't waste time, let's focus on the task at hand. Upon hearing this, the wolf soldier reluctantly released the woman, saying, Captain, I haven't relaxed in a long time. The boss said that if this goes well, we'll all go to Night Heaven Club for fun, and the boss will foot the bill. Hubajin said. Upon hearing this, everyone's eyes lit up, and the atmosphere suddenly became lively. Night Heaven Club, the girls there are really something. I went there once before, and I'm still reminiscing about it. That's right. Earth women, although a bit weaker, are tender and delicious. Tasting them is still quite enjoyable. You're getting me all excited. Let's get this done quickly. The group of people left in high spirits. Chin Fei watched their departing figures, his brow furrowing. The integration of different realms, while bringing opportunities, seems to have also brought about some problems. With a slight sigh, Chin Fei walked out of the terminal building. Immediately, a group of people approached him. Esteemed guest, where are you heading? I'm familiar with this place on Earth. I can take you anywhere. Boss, need to exchange currency? One Earth you want spirit stone can be exchanged for 90,000 Earth coins. Need accommodation? Boss. Our hotel offers various delicacies. And even beautiful women. I'm from Earth. Chin Fei spoke fluently in Mandarin, causing the people around him to scatter in an instant. Some even left behind a few complaints. Darn it, should have said that earlier, wasted our time. Damn, pretending to be a foreigner with that rustic hat. I thought he was a VIP from another realm? What a waste of expression. After wandering around the area, Chin Fei got a rough idea of the situation. The place he was in now was the island where the Forbidden Island was originally located. Later, after expansion and development, it became a transit station for travel between Earth and the Three Realms. Now, major powers from Earth have set up their own agencies here, responsible for communicating with visitors from the other Three Realms. 
Of course, there are also flights to various parts of the world here. However, it was still early, and the earliest flight to Huashia would take another four hours. Shen Fei's heart was already set on returning, with no mood to wait. He found an empty corner, whoosh, and flew directly into the sky, heading towards the direction of Huashia. Flying over Earth, Chen Fei felt particularly relaxed. With just a slight release of his energy, he could increase his speed to two or three times that of an airplane. So, in about half an hour, Chen Fei flew over the airspace of Huaxia's capital. Finding an uninhabited area, Chen Fei descended from the sky. As he strolled through the streets, Chen Fei noticed that the changes in the capital were considerable. The spiritual energy in the air had become denser than before, and the aura of the pedestrians on the street had clearly grown stronger. There were also many shops along the road selling products from Dian Realm, Dashia Realm, and the Earth Yuan Realm, showcasing the specialties of those realms. However, with just a glance, Chen Fei could tell that those so-called specialties were all genuine Earth goods. Apart from that, the largest category was undoubtedly various martial arts-related shops, martial arts schools, and even dojos. From various advertisements, Chen Fei caught a few familiar names. The Holy Knight Order, the Spiritual Illumination Society, the Bitter Sea Sect. Of course, the Huawu Pavilion was naturally one of them, but from the layout of the advertisements and the slogans, its status seemed to have declined compared to before. Because of the considerable changes, Chen Fei had to spend some effort before finding the villa where he and his wife had lived before. Rushing all the way back to the villa. Standing at the door, Chen Fei raised his hand to knock, but his hand stopped in midair, frozen in hesitation. No one's home. Did they go out? However, upon closer observation, Chen Fei noticed that the villa gate was tightly closed, with weeds growing in the yard indicating that it had been uninhabited for some time. Johan isn't here. Did she move out? Then where is she now? For a moment, Chen Fei felt a sense of loss and loneliness. However, he soon looked up and saw the neon lights of a towering skyscraper, catching his eye. The Autumn Group. Yes, I should go there and ask. Someone should know. So, without stopping, Chen Fei quickly made his way to the headquarters of the Autumn Group. Upon entering the building, Chen Fei went straight to the front desk and spoke. Hello, is Ms. Lin here? Uh. The receptionist girl was taken aback. Chen Fei continued, It's the Autumn Group. Ms. Lin Xiu Han, is she here? The receptionist looked at Chen Fei in surprise and said, I'm sorry, but our Ms. Lin retired a long time ago. Retired. Chen Fei paused for a moment, then continued. Then what about Wei Ling? Is she retired too? The receptionist said, Ms. Wei also retired. Uh, then who is the current CEO of the company? Chen Fei asked. The receptionist replied, Ms. Sun. Ms. Sun. Chen Fei looked puzzled. The receptionist said, Ms. Sun Shi, the CEO. Sun Shi. Chen Fei paused for a moment, finally remembering. Sun Shi is Sun Fingqin's granddaughter, who used to play with Lin Xiuhan when she was young until Lin Xiuhan left the Sun family. Sun Shi had some unpleasant disputes with the family because of marriage matters. Later, after Chen Fei subdued the Sun family, Sun Shi had been following Lin Xiuhan, and their relationship was very good. Unexpectedly, Lin Xiuhan had let Sun Shi take over the Autumn Group now. With a thought in his mind, Chen Fei said to the receptionist, I would like to meet with your Ms. Sun. Is she available? Uh, well? The receptionist hesitated for a moment, then explained, Sir, do you have an appointment? Uh, Chen Fei didn't want to trouble the receptionist girl, so he apologized and left the building. Then, he went around to the side of the building, leaped into the air, and flew up to the top floor. Finding an open window, Chen Fei entered the building. After searching the corridor, it didn't take long for Chen Fei to find a door with a sign that read CEO's office. Found it. The office is still in the same place. 
Shin Fei muttered to himself, walked over, and prepared to knock on the door. But at that moment, he heard a conversation inside the room, between a man and a woman. Miss Sun, we are very sincere about this matter. Mystery, I'm sorry, but our group has no intention of selling shares. Miss Sun, I hope you will consider this matter carefully. After all, the world situation is different now, and the Autumn Group should also have a new direction for development. Thank you, Mr. E, for your concern. I will take note of your advice. I have another meeting later. If Mr. E has nothing else, then... This was clearly a polite way of asking someone to leave. Chapter 3630 However, the man's tone paused, becoming displeased. Miss Sun... It seems I was too polite just now. You misunderstood me. What do you mean, Mr. E? Miss Sun, you're smart, so I'll be straightforward. This time, Autumn Group shares, we need at least 40%. It's a must. You. A woman's voice sounded angry. But before the woman could finish, the man interrupted, Miss Sun, one month deadline. If you're not prepared by then, I believe you wouldn't want to see the consequences. Mystery Dongxiang, I don't care who's backing you up, but let me tell you, don't think of threatening Autumn Group. We won't fall for it. The woman also became resolute. You won't fall for it? Then just wait and see. The man said angrily, then the door opened, and a man in his 30s or 40s, dressed in a suit, walked out with a look of anger. Seeing Chin Fei standing at the door, the man drove him away displeased, get out of here. Chin Fei stood still, blocking the man. You. The man was surprised, then frowned, and said coldly, Do you know what you're doing? Chin Fei looked into the office, and a woman wearing an OL uniform, with a beautiful and dignified face, walked out upon hearing the commotion. Although her cheeks had grown larger, and there were more wrinkles due to her age, her facial features remained the same as they were years ago. She was Sun Shi. Sun Shi? Did he just threaten you? Chen Fei asked. Yes. Sun Shi instinctively nodded. At this, Chen Fei looked at Yi Dongxiang in front of him, grabbed his arm, snapped it directly. Ah. Yi Dongxiang let out a miserable cry, then stared fiercely at Chen Fei. You just hit me. I'll kill you. Snap. Another crisp sound. Yi Dongxiang's other arm also broke. Sun Shi was also stunned by this scene, dumbfounded for a moment before regaining her senses. This, this. Yi Dongxiang fell to the ground, glaring at Sun Shi fiercely, gritting his teeth. Sun, I'll make you and your company pay for this. Yule. Mr. E, this matter. Sun Shi wanted to explain. Chen Fei, without any politeness, kicked Yi Dongxiang unconscious. Then, he looked at Sun Shi and asked, Sun Shi, do you know where Chiu Han is staying now? Chiu Han's sister, she's staying. Sun Shi was stunned, then looked wary. Who are you? And why are you looking for Chiu Han's sister? Seeing the other's cautious look, Chen Fei couldn't help but smile. He reached out and pinched Sun Shi's cheek, gently tugging it. Little girl, now, you don't even recognize me. After saying that, Chen Fei flipped his long hair aside, revealing his face. Sun Shi stared at him for a few seconds, her face suddenly changed drastically, full of astonishment, pointing at Chen Fei, her voice trembling, You, you, your brother Chen. Chen Fei, brother Chen? You, you're back from outside? Is this, is this real? I didn't dream, did I? Chen Fei laughed, of course it's real. Oh, by the way, do you know where Chiu Huan is? Chen Fei asked again. Chiu Huan's sister moved away over a decade ago. How about I call Chiu Huan's sister and let her know to come over? Sun Shi said as she pulled out her phone. Xiao Si, just tell me the exact address. I go find her myself, Chen Fei said. Oh, right, right. Big brother Chen, since you want to surprise sister Chiu Huan, I won't notify her then. Sun Shi said, then promptly gave the address to Chen Fei. Without wasting any time, 
Shen Fei bid Sun Qi farewell and went straight to Chou Wan's place. Soon, he arrived at a quiet villa area. Shen Fei walked up to a two-story building, his pace involuntarily slowing down. Through a lush garden, Shen Fei looked through the wide French windows and saw a woman leaning on the sofa, holding a large Doryman plush toy in her arms, eating and watching TV. Chou Wan. Although it was just a side view at that moment, Chen Fei was sure the woman inside was his wife, Lin Xiu Wan. After watching for a while, the woman got up from the sofa, fetched a bottle of water. Now, Chen Fei could see the woman's face clearly. Still exquisite and gentle, still beautiful and generous, although there were some wrinkles on her face due to age, she still looked young, appearing to be only in her 30s or 40s, still graceful and even added some mature and elegant temperament. Wife. Chen Fei couldn't help but let out a soft call, about to step forward. But at that moment, a slender figure with gray hair walked to Lin Xiu Wan's side and sat down next to her. This is. Chen Fei didn't recognize the slender figure at first. Sitting together, the two began to talk. Their voices were not loud, but to Chen Fei, they were clear. Chiu Huan, how did your discussion with that young master Zhou, whom Elderly introduced to you last time, go? Do you have any feelings? I heard Elderly say that young master Zhou is quite fond of you. Mom, I've told you, that's not suitable. You don't think young master Zhou is suitable, then what about young master Lin? He's also a good person. Hearing this, Chen Fei recognized it immediately. That white-haired old lady was his mother-in-law, Xieling Shuang. When he left, she was in her fifties. Now, she's almost in her nineties, with white hair all over her head, which is quite normal. However, what surprised Chen Fei was that he had just returned, and he heard his mother-in-law introducing blind dates to his wife again. Not only was he surprised, but Lin Xiaohuan herself seemed a bit surprised too, her tone somewhat impatient. Mom, it's not about that person. I'm already this old, and you still want me to go on blind dates? What's this supposed to mean? You're only in your 60s, not even 70 yet. In this day and age, you're still considered young. Isn't it normal to go on blind dates? Mom, blind dates are normal. But I'm already married. I'm still in a married state now. Don't mention this. Every time you bring it up, I get angry. What's the meaning of Chin Fei leaving you alone and running off to some other world? not returning for so many years, not even a bit of news. What kind of husband is he? In my opinion, you should have divorced him long ago. Outside the house, Chen Fei, upon hearing this, couldn't help but feel a headache, his steps pausing. Lin Xiaohuan continued, Mom, Chen Fei left initially to save the earth, for everyone's sake. Don't make him sound like a heartless man. Isn't he? He had many women around him. Now that he's gone to another world, who knows if he'll attract a bunch of women again? Who knows if he still remembers you? Mom, stop saying these things. Anyway, I'm Chen Fei's wife, and I won't look for other men. Chapter 3631 Seeing the woman's firm attitude, mother-in-law Xieling Shuang changed the subject and began to persuade. Chiu Wan, I understand that you don't want to get married. But you're not young anymore after all. You should have a child eventually, so I can have a grandson. Well, I don't like. Lin Xiu Huan was momentarily at a loss for words. Her mother-in-law interrupted her directly. Don't make excuses. You quite like children. Last time at Wu Ming's house and at Tao Ling's house. You saw their sons and daughters. You liked them a lot, holding them for a long time without letting go. Don't you want to be a mother yourself, holding your own child and playing with them? Lin Xiu Wan's expression changed, hesitated for a moment, then said, Mom, I also want children. But you also know, Chen Fei left. So I... Her mother-in-law interrupted, It doesn't have to be Chen Fei's. Mom, what are you talking about? I am Chen Fei's wife. How can my child not be his? Lin Xiu Wan said. Her mother-in-law shrugged, Chen Fei, Chen Fei. Whether he comes back or not, you can't say for sure. Mom, please stop. We haven't divorced yet, 
and I can't possibly go find someone else, let alone have a child with someone else. Lin Chiu Wan's tone was a bit angry. Her mother-in-law held on to her daughter and said, Chiu Wan, don't be anxious, listen to me. I didn't mean it that way. What do you mean then? Lin Chiu Wan still looked sulky. I mean, nowadays with advanced technology, having a child doesn't have to be that way. You can have a test tube baby. This. Lin Chiu Wan was momentarily speechless, never having thought about this aspect before. Her mother-in-law continued, Chiu Wan, rest assured, these are all legitimate institutions. All procedures and regulations are very strict. There will be no leaks, and no one will cause trouble. But, Lin Xiu Huan shook her head lightly. I still want a child with Chen Fei, not with some stranger whose name I don't even know. Bringing up Chen Fei again, her mother-in-law became a little impatient. It's been so many years, and you still mention him. Is it necessary? Xiu Huan, mom is not young anymore. Probably need to consider her future. Can't you think about yourself and mom? Lin Xiu Wan's expression became troubled. Mom, I understand what you mean. But, hearing this, Chen Fei outside couldn't stand still anymore. Quickly walked to the door and knocked. Uh, someone. Inside the house, the two of them were stunned for a moment, then glanced at each other. Then, Xie Ling Shuang walked up to open the door then saw a stranger with long hair, and instantly became alert. Who are you? Chin Fei pushed back his long hair and called out, Mother-in-law, it's me. You, you're... Xie Ling Shuang saw Chin Fei and was stunned. Hearing the commotion, Lin Chiu Huan also walked over. Mom, who is it? A guest. As a result, Lin Chiu Huan saw the face she had been yearning for day and night, and stood still in place her face full of astonishment. You, you. Seeing this, Chen Fei walked into the house, came to Lin Xiu Wan, and hugged her, softly saying, Xiu Wan, it's me, Chen Fei. I'm back. This embrace immediately brought Lin Xiu Wan back from her days. She looked up at the man in front of her, at that face that had hardly changed in over 40 years, tears uncontrollably streaming down her cheeks. Chen Fei. Is it really you? You finally come back. Chin Fei hugged Lin Xiu Huan tightly, gently patting her back, softly saying, It's me. It's really me. On the other side, mother-in-law Skelling Shuang also snapped out of it, her eyes filled with excitement and complexity. For a while, the three in the room were speechless, only the sound of continuous sobbing. About half an hour later, Lin Xiu Wan's emotions finally stabilized. Chen Fei held her hand, sat on the sofa, and briefly recounted his experiences. Lin Xiu Huan listened attentively, although she didn't understand the terms Chen Fei often mentioned like elemental realm, capital city, cultivator, but from his various words, she could feel the richness and danger of his journey. It's so good that you've safely returned. All the emotions in the end, turned into a caring concern from a wife to her husband. Seeing this, mother-in-law Xie Ling Shuang got up voluntarily and said, Little Chin is back. I need to quickly go buy groceries and cook. You two should have a good chat. After seeing off her mother-in-law, Chin Fei lifted Lin Xiu Huan. Xiu Huan, where's the bedroom? Ah, oh, what are you doing? Lin Xiu Huan was taken aback. Chin Fei leaned close to Lin Xiu Huan, smiling, of course. I'm doing you. You. Lin Xiu Huan blushed, hitting Chen Fei's chest a few times. You rogue. Put me down. Not letting go. Didn't someone just say they wanted to have a child with me? Chen Fei said, let's put it into practice now. You eavesdropped on our conversation. Lin Xiu Huan's cheeks flushed. At this moment, Chen Fei had already carried her into the bedroom. Soon, there was the sound of fabric rustling in the room followed by the sound of collisions and moans. After the passionate encounter, two hours had passed. On the big bed, Lin Xiu Wan leaned against Chen Fei's chest, looking at his face as if it were yesterday's, her heart suddenly trembling, letting out a sigh. What's wrong? Chen Fei asked softly. 
Lin Chiu Wan touched her own cheeks and whispered, You're still the same as when you left. Hardly any change. And I've already aged. Hearing his wife's words, Chin Fei's heart stirred. Understanding something, a green aura appeared in his palm, and he said to Lin Chiu Wan, Wife, close your eyes and wait a moment. Uh. Lin Chiu Wan hesitated slightly, but then closed her eyes. Then, Chin Fei placed his palm on Lin Chiu Wan's head, gradually infusing the energy from his palm into her body. After a while, Chin Fei removed his right hand and said, Wife, it's done. Look at yourself in the mirror. Lin Xiu Huan opened her eyes, got off the bed, and went to the bedside table mirror to take a look, suddenly exclaiming, Ah. She kept touching her cheeks, her face full of joy. Such a big change. The wrinkles are gone, and the skin has become smooth. I've really become younger. It's so magical. Move your body a bit. See if you feel anything. Jin Fei smiled. Lin Xiu Huan tried, even more pleasantly surprised. Because she found that her body had become much more energetic than before, as if she had suddenly become 10 years younger. This is great. Lin Xiu Huan threw away her reservedness, directly pounced on Chen Fei, and kissed him actively. This time, the flame that had just been extinguished by Chen Fei suddenly flared up again as he hugged his wife and pressed her down. Another hour passed, and there was a knock on the door from the mother-in-law. Dinner's ready. Are you two rested? Mom, we're ready. We'll be out soon. Lin Xiao Wan's cheeks flushed, and she hurriedly got up to dress. Chapter 3632 Walking out of the room, Lin Xiao Wan's mother-in-law couldn't help but be surprised when she saw her. Lin Xiao Huan hurriedly explained that it was Chin Fei's ability. Chin Fei also added that they had only performed a rejuvenation once. If Lin Xiao Huan underwent multiple rejuvenations with Qi, she could become even younger. It was entirely possible for her to restore her appearance to that of her 20s. After hearing this, Lin Xiao Huan's mother in law's eyes lit up involuntarily, looking at Chin Fei with an expression that seemed to have something to say. Seeing this, Chen Fei naturally understood his mother-in-law's meaning. Regardless of a woman's age, the idea of becoming younger and more beautiful was irresistible. So Chen Fei took the initiative to speak up. Mother-in-law, how about I rejuvenate you too? If it's troublesome, then forget about it. The mother-in-law said. Chen Fei said, it's not troublesome at all, not at all. It'll be quick. After speaking, Chin Fei directly circulated his qi and gave his mother-in-law a rejuvenation treatment. After a while, the mother-in-law's white hair began to turn black, and the wrinkles on her face visibly smoothed out. She looked significantly younger. Now, Lin Xiao Wan's mother-in-law, Xiaoling Shuang, was all smiles. The slight dissatisfaction she had harbored toward Chin Fei disappeared with it. So... The family of three sat together, eating and chatting. As they chatted, Chen Fei casually mentioned the incident with Sun Xi at the group headquarters earlier. After listening, Lin Xiu Huan frowned. The surname Yi looks to be about in his thirties? Chen Fei nodded. Lin Xiu Huan said solemnly, It should be Yi Wan's son, Yi Dongxiang. I didn't expect them to not give up yet and actually threaten Sun Xi. Yi Wan, Yi Dongxiang. What's their background? Is it troublesome? Chen Fei asked. Lin Xiu Huan said, It's not a big deal, but it's a bit troublesome. Yuan, decades ago, was just a small director of a department. Later, when the channel opened up, there was a major change in the Earth's environment. This director he resigned and went into business, starting his own company overseas and doing business there. I don't know about his experiences abroad, but his business progressed smoothly, and his company quickly grew, becoming a well-known new conglomerate overseas. In recent years, he has returned from abroad and begun to expand his business domestically. Because some of their company's business overlaps with Autumn Group's, he wanted to cooperate with Autumn Group, but was rejected at the time. Later, he sought various connections, got in touch with me, and wanted to acquire shares of Autumn Group, but I didn't pay attention. As a result, that Ewan actually made some covert moves. 
But before it started, it was discovered by the people from Huawu Pavilion and nipped in the bud. Also, because of Huawu Pavilion's warning, Iwan behaved himself for a while. But unexpectedly, he resurfaced during this time, and this time he let his son Yi Dongxiang take the lead, even directly threatening Sun Shi. I think they're trying to cause trouble again. After listening, Chen Fei furrowed his brows lightly and said, Do you want me to deal with it? Lin Xiaohuan shook her head gently, forget it, it hasn't reached that point yet. Let Sun Shi be more vigilant herself. While Chen Fei and Lin Xiaohuan were being affectionate, inside the headquarters of Autumn Group, Sun Shi, who had just finished her work, couldn't contain her excitement any longer and sent a message to her small group. Let me tell you all some big news today, Chen Fei, Big Brother Chen, is back. The previously quiet group suddenly became lively. Sun Shi, are you joking again? You little rascal, are you missing your big brother Chen so much? Dreaming in broad daylight. I'm going to screenshot this information and send it to Sister Autumn. Let her know that you're missing your brother-in-law, humph. I'm not joking, it's true. Just now, Brother Chen came to the company and chatted with me for a few words. Really? Xiao Shi, you're not joking. Of course it's true. If you don't believe me, I'll send you the company's surveillance footage. A short video clip was sent out, showing the scene of Chen Fei appearing and talking with Sun Shi. Instantly, the group became excited. Is that really Brother Chen's appearance? So alike. Isn't he an actor? It's uncanny. Brother Chen is really back. Where is he? I want to come back. I want to see him immediately. Xiao Shi, you better not be lying to us. Would I lie about something like this? Brother Chen should be heading to Sister Chiu Han's place now. If you don't believe me, go ask Sister Chiu Han yourself. I believe. I'm going over right away. I'm canceling my plans and going over immediately. Wait for me. I'm out of town. I can't come back right away. Sob. With Sun Shi's message, the information about Chin Fei's return quickly spread among the relevant groups. At the headquarters of Autumn Group, President Sun Shi called in her secretary, postponed all afternoon affairs, and left the company. Inside Huawu Pavilion, Vice Pavilion Master Chin Xiling, disregarding her image, jumped up and then left her current tasks behind, turning to leave. In a meeting room of a certain business hotel, Wei Ling, who was preparing to give a speech on stage, saw the message, bowed apologetically, and then left. Dear guests, I'm very sorry, but I have an urgent matter to attend to and need to leave. At the Beijing Music Academy, Zhang Xiuyue, who was already a professor, looked at her phone, immediately requested leave from the principal. Principal, I have something to attend to. I can't make it to the meeting this afternoon. Professor Zhang, the meeting this afternoon is very important. The guests are renowned singers from home and abroad. If you miss this opportunity. The principal hesitated. Zhang Shouyue smiled faintly and said firmly, Principal, this matter is more important than all of that. It's even more important than myself. At the backstage of a certain international film festival, the acclaimed Song Yi, ignoring the heavy formal attire she was wearing, got up and left upon seeing the message. Her agent, seeing this, hurriedly advised from behind, Miss Song, this film festival is your chance to win big. You might even win a Lifetime Achievement Award. Leaving now would jeopardize all of that. Songi gently shook her head and said, Compared to the person I need to meet, these awards are insignificant. Apart from the women in Sun Shi's small group, news of Chen Fei's return also spread to other circles. Su Jun Shan, the retired former military hero of China, heard the news from his close bodyguard and immediately put down his fishing rod, back to Beijing. Zhu Kuishin, who was having tea and chatting with his companions, also put down his teacup with a surprised and joyful expression, that kid is back, I have to go see him. Li Shintian, Song Shu, Mu Ningbian, one by one, the names that were once renowned in China and even worldwide, upon hearing the news, all put aside their current tasks and rushed to Beijing from all corners of the country. 
And so, the person in charge of Beijing International Airport's phone kept ringing incessantly. All right, I'll arrange it immediately, ensuring the safety of the old leaders. Yes, I'll coordinate the flights immediately to ensure the fastest arrival in Beijing. The airport's special passage will be kept clear. Finally, after nearly half an hour of nonstop calls, the person in charge couldn't help but wipe the sweat from his forehead and sighed, what happened to cause so many big shots to suddenly return to Beijing? Chapter 3633 Around the same time, in a high and private hospital in Beijing. With a slightly plump figure, dressed in a suit, Iwan, with an anxious expression, hurried into the hospital room. How's my son? Seeing this, the dedicated doctor immediately stood up respectfully and approached, speaking up. Mr. E, young Master Yi's surgery was successful. We used two healing medicines sourced from the local realm, and the results are very good. Young Master Yi's arm is basically recovered. With a few more days of rest, he will be completely healed. There's nothing to worry about. Upon hearing this, Iwan breathed a sigh of relief and approached the hospital bed. At this moment, Yi Dongxiang leaned against the bed, his arms in bandages, his face filled with resentment. Dad, this time you must avenge me. Iwan asked in a deep voice, what exactly happened? Immediately, Yi Dongxiang quickly recounted his experience at Autumn Group. After listening, Iwan frowned. Are you saying you were injured by Sun Shi's men at Autumn Group? Yes. Yi Dongxiang nodded. Iwan asked with suspicion, Sun Shi is aware of your identity. How dare she directly order someone to attack you? especially within her own company. Could it be that Autumn Group intends to openly oppose our E-Group? I've discussed this with Lin Xiu Han and Sun Shi before. They shouldn't do such a thing. Yi Dongxiang said discontentedly, Dad, I've been beaten up like this. There's no should or shouldn't. I'm going to teach that woman a lesson, and I'll contact Elder Inno. Mentioning Inno, Yi Wan's expression darkened. Dongxiang, don't act rashly. Yi Dongxiang exclaimed, Dad, this isn't rash. In my opinion, we should directly have Elder Inno send someone over to arrest those women from Autumn Group. I don't believe they'll dare to refuse to hand over the company then. Yuan shook his head. Things aren't as simple as you think. Autumn Group is not an ordinary company. Its relationship with Huawu Pavilion is close. Moreover, the original founder of Autumn Group and the founder of Huawu Pavilion are the same person. It's the one who was once known as the Earth's foremost master. That person. Yi Dongxiang interrupted impatiently, cutting off his father's words. Dad, you're bringing up these outdated things again. What foremost master, what earth's first, it's all in the past. Nowadays, Huawu Pavilion is not as influential as before. There's no need to worry. Yi Wan shook his head. Even if Huawu Pavilion has declined, it still shouldn't be underestimated. Especially in China, no one knows how much power Huawu Pavilion still holds so we mustn't underestimate it. Yi Dongxiang said, Okay, okay. Even if Huawu Pavilion is still powerful, but Mr. Inno is an elder of the Holy Knight's Order. The current strength of the Holy Knight's Order, the strength of Elder Inno, Dad, you know. There's no need to worry at all. Yi Wan still worried, even so, but... Seeing his father hesitating, Yi Dongxiang complained, Dad, let's not talk about business matters. I've been beaten up like this, and you're really going to sit back and do nothing. This. He won, after all, felt sorry for his son, and finally nodded. On this matter, Autumn Group must give an explanation. In a few days, I'll personally visit them and... He don't young urge urgently, Dad, don't wait a few days. Let's go now. Now. He won was startled. Yes, right now. Yi Dongxiang jumped off the hospital bed. Dad, I've already had someone keep an eye on Sun Shi and her people. Also, I've contacted Elder Inno. He sent his guard, Matthews, to come over and join us. There's no need to worry about safety. Yi Wan understood his son's character. He knew that if he didn't agree to this, his son wouldn't stay put. So, he finally nodded. Then let's go now. A few minutes later, 
a specially made black sedan left the hospital. Over an hour later, the black sedan stopped in front of a villa area. In the car, Iwan glanced at his son and asked, Are you sure about this? Ido Xiang replied, Dad, my men are professionals. They found out that Sun Shi came here right after leaving the company. Let's go down. After saying that, Idong Xiang got out of the car. Besides two bodyguards dressed in black suits and sunglasses, there was also a tall black foreigner who stepped towards the villa alongside them. Seeing this, Iwan could only follow along. Entering the villa area, after about 10 minutes, Idong Xiang's excited voice sounded, It's here. Sun Shi's car is parked over there. It's that villa. Dad, let's hurry. Idong Xiang was already eager to seek revenge. Iwan followed and arrived at the entrance of the villa, where he immediately spotted Sun Shi inside, accompanied by a stunning woman. Lin Chiu Han, it's her. Iwan was startled. Hearing this, Ido Xiang narrowed his eyes and gritted his teeth. Lin Xiuhan's home, that's perfect. Didn't they say that although Lin Xiuhan retired, she still manages Autumn Group? That's perfect. Let's take down these two women from Autumn Group directly. With that, Ido Xiang strode forward. Sun Shi, hand over the person who attacked me. As soon as he shouted, several people inside the house looked over. How come he's here? Sun Shi frowned. Seeing Yiwan behind Yi Dongxiang, Lin Xiuhan's expression also turned cold. Yiwan is here too. At this moment, Chen Fei appeared in front of the two women and calmly said, Leave it to me. After speaking, he strode towards Yi Dongxiang. As soon as Yi Dongxiang saw Chen Fei, he became excited. It's you. You dare to show up. Matthews, give him a beating. Beat him to death. The black man behind him remained silent stepping forward to act. Seeing this, Chen Fei raised an eyebrow, his eyes narrowing. Just as he was about to take action, a cold snort came from behind. Who is causing trouble here? The scene paused, and everyone turned to see three mature, beautiful, and each uniquely charming women approaching. Ah, uh, Yi Dongxiang was taken aback. But Yi Wan recognized the three women in front of him at a glance. Wei Ling, Zhang Chouyue, Song Yi. These three women were well-known figures in China. Yi Wan was naturally familiar with them, and their influence in the business and entertainment circles was considerable. However, Yi Dongxiang, with an indifferent expression, snorted, just three old women dared to interfere in our Yi family's affairs. You'd better step aside early, otherwise, you'll be dealt with along with them. You. The three women were instantly infuriated. Slap. A crisp sound echoed as Yi Dongxiang received a heavy slap on his face. Immediately, accompanied by a whirlwind, a slender, delicate-faced, and seemingly young woman appeared, glaring fiercely at Yi Dongxiang. Chapter 3634 You dare to hit me. Yi Dongxiang was furious. Foul mouth deserves a beating. The woman shouted sternly, then slapped Yi Dongxiang across the face. This enraged Yi Dongxiang even more, almost jumping in anger. Matthew, kill this woman. I want her dead. Kill her. Matthew, the burly man, took a step forward, like a raging rhinoceros, with a thunderous momentum, charging towards the slender woman. However, just as Matthew was about to reach the woman, the woman raised her right hand and lightly slapped forward. An invisible force burst out, crashing into Matthew. The sturdy Matthew was sent flying, crashing heavily to the ground, letting out a miserable scream. Yi Dongxiang, with a face full of anger, was shocked, his face full of disbelief. After all, he was aware of Matthew's strength, which was at the pinnacle of the Elemental Realm 8th stage. In this world full of martial artists, he was considered a master. But the result, just as he was astonished, the woman walked towards Yi Dongxiang. Yi Dongxiang trembled with fear, stepping back several steps, his voice trembling, I, I am from the Yi group. You, you shouldn't act recklessly. Beside him, 
Iwan also hurriedly protected his son, saying in a deep voice, This young lady, I am Iwan, the president of the E group. There is no need for things to escalate to this point. We can. Before Iwan could finish, the woman stared directly at him, saying sharply, Nonsense. When you were bullying Sister Chiu Huan and insulting my friend, did you ever think about having a proper conversation? This. Yuan's expression changed, feeling a sense of fear rising. And at this critical moment, a somewhat clumsy voice spoke up. Lord Shen, it's not quite appropriate to put pressure on two ordinary people like this. As he spoke, a foreign man with blonde hair and blue eyes, who looked to be around 50 or 60 years old, walked over. Seeing this person, both Yi Wan and Yi Dongxiang became excited at the same time. Elder Eno. Elder, you're here. These people bullied me. You must. However, before he could finish his sentence, he was glared at by Eno, who then squinted at the woman and said to the father and son of the Yi family, This is Vice Master Chen Xiling of Huawu Pavilion. You must not be rude. Upon hearing this name, the two of them were suddenly shocked. After all, although Huawu Pavilion was not as prominent as before, anyone who could become a vice master was definitely a top master in the martial arts world. Not to mention, this Chen Xiling, there were rumors about her. She was the junior sister of Master Chen from back then, with an unfathomable background. Thinking of this, Yi Wan dared not show any arrogance, quickly bowing respectfully to Chen Xiling, saying, Yi Wan greets Vice Master Chen. The child was disrespectful just now, please. Since you know you were disrespectful, then punish yourselves. Chen Xiling was not in a good mood. With a flick of her hand, she threw a dagger, landing in front of the father and son. The two of them had never encountered such a powerful figure before, suddenly feeling a chill, their eyelids trembling. They could only turn to Inno, seeking help with their eyes. Inno stepped forward, looking at Chen Xiling, and said, It's just a small matter, Vice Master Chen. Why be so angry? If it's such a small matter, then what concern is it of yours? Chen Xiling directly retorted. Inno choked for a moment, a surge of anger rising, his voice becoming heavier. Master Chen, the family father and son are close partners of my Holy Knight's Order. If Master Chen insists on taking action, then I'm afraid I will have to consider it as a declaration of war against my Holy Knight's order. Are you threatening me? Chen Xiling raised an eyebrow. Even if I go to war with your Holy Knight's order, so what? Eno's tone grew heavy, his momentum starting to rise. He coldly snorted, Master Chen, be cautious with your words. If you want to go to war with my Holy Knight's order, I wonder if Master Mu Yuching would dare to say such words. Chen Xiling's temper flared up, and she didn't show any weakness, directly engaging in a verbal confrontation with Inno. Want to fight? Fine, let's do it. With that said, Chen Xiling's energy erupted without reservation, pressing toward Inno with a stance ready to fight. You. Inno was startled, then his gaze grew solemn but he didn't back down, his momentum rising, preparing for battle. For a moment, the atmosphere here became tense. Seeing that a major conflict was about to break out at this critical moment, several deep voices sounded. Is Mr. Inno trying to cause trouble by using force on the soil of our Huaxia? I've said it before, those foreign martial arts organizations should not be allowed in, they should be directly driven out. When have the members of the Holy Knight's Order been so arrogant in Huaxia? Following the sound, several tall and short old men walked over. These people looked old, with wrinkled brows and snowy white hair. But between their steps, they exuded an incomparably powerful pressure, like several fierce beasts. These old men are. Yi Dongxiang couldn't help but furrow his brow. Yuan beside him quickly covered Yi Dongxiang's mouth reminding him with a horrified expression, shut up quickly. These are not people you can mess with. People you can't mess with? Yi Dongxiang showed a puzzled expression. At this moment, Elder Eno squinted his eyes, suppressed his energy, looked at the old men, and muttered softly, 
Li Shengtian, Su Ju Shan, Zhu Quishan, Mu Ningbren. Why would these people appear here? Even though Yi Dongxiang grew up abroad, he had heard of these names, showing a surprised expression. And at this moment, Inno, after thinking for a few seconds, his face changed slightly, revealing a smile, and he arched his hand to the old men, saying, Elder Inno of the Holy Knight's Order, I've met all the seniors of the Huaxia. Since all the seniors are here, then we will take our leave. With that said, Inno grabbed Matthew from the void and turned to leave. Seeing this, Yi Wan and Yi Dongxiang hurriedly followed. Li Shuntian, seeing this, snorted coldly, displeased, the stench of the Holy Knight's order has reached here, stretching their hands into our Huaxia. Zhu Quishan said, we shouldn't be polite with these foreign devils, just kill them. On the side, Mu Ningbin spoke up, all right, you're all old men, stop being fierce. The main thing is to focus on the matter at hand. After speaking, the several of them looked expectant and quickly walked toward the villa. Seeing this, the first to arrive, Wei Ling, Zhang Chouyue, and Song Yi, also quickened their pace. Chin Xiling paused for a moment, directly leaped up, and flew toward the villa gate. That's my senior brother, my brother, don't snatch him from me. The group rushed to the villa gate in a commotion, clamoring and rushing inside, creating a noisy scene. A voice sounded. I'm here. Suddenly, the scene fell silent, the expressions of these influential figures in Huaxia changing. The several women, including Wei Ling, couldn't help but burst into tears, crying. Yuan and Yi Dongxiang, who hadn't gone far, noticed the commotion at the villa gate and couldn't help but turn their heads, their faces full of curiosity. What's happening? They seem very excited. Did they see some important figures? Why are they all losing their composure? Chapter 3635 Chin Fei welcomed the guests into the house, and even the spacious living room now seemed packed to the brim. If someone were to take a photo at this moment and send it out, it would surely shake up Huaxia, and even the entire globe. Because, seated here, were all the top figures from various sectors of Huaxia. From the entertainment industry to the business world, from the military to the political arena, and even to the most crucial world of martial arts, each one was a renowned figure. And these eminent figures, at this moment, all looked at Chen Fei with excitement and anticipation. Chen Fei looked at the excited crowd and smiled lightly. I'm back. With these words, it was as if a floodgate had been opened, and everyone's words rushed out, all directed at Chen Fei. Master Chen, how have you been in the native realm? Little Chen, do you have any missions this time you've returned? By the way, what are the native realms Grand Ming Prefecture, Grand Flame Realm, and Grand Summer Realm like? Do you know? What level is your strength at now? Li Shintian, Su Ju Shan, and the others, these big shots, basically asked about matters concerning the native realm and cultivation. Different from them, Wei Ling, Song Yi, and the other women focused entirely on Chen Fei personally. Chen Fei, are you leaving again this time you've come back? You've slimmed down. Have you been well in the native realm? To be honest, did you do anything to upset Sister Chiu Han while you were there? Faced with this barrage of questions, Chen Fei briefly explained the situation of the Grand Ming Prefecture and the native realm to Li Jintian and the others. I didn't have any special purpose for coming back this time, just to see how things are in my hometown. After hearing this, Zhu Quishan couldn't wait and asked, Little Chin, you said the Lord of the Grand Ming Prefecture is our predecessor from Earth. What's his name? Is he powerful? And, are the conflicts severe between the Grand Ming Prefecture and the other prefectures? Is there any danger? What about the heavenly demons you mentioned? Do you have detailed information? On the side, Li Jintian and Su Jun Shan also looked expectantly over, obviously eager to know this information. Seeing this, Chen Fei was momentarily unsure how to respond. It was Mu Ningbrin who intervened to break the tension, speaking up, you old guys, isn't that enough? Can these matters be explained in just a few words? 
Besides, Little Chin just got back, and he still has important matters to attend to. We old fogies should stop taking up the young people's time. After saying this, Mu Ningbin pointed to the various women on the sofa, her face showing a mix of emotions. Old Shu, if you don't stop, I can see Little Song and the others coming over to shut your mouth. Zhu Quishan immediately slapped his forehead and hastily got up. I've been foolish. All right, all right. Let's not talk about these things for now. We'll take our leave first. We won't disturb the good things for you young people. After saying this, Zhu Quishan didn't forget to pat Chin Fei on the shoulder, reminding him, Little Chin, do your best tonight. The others also got up and bid farewell. Even Su Jushan, who was always serious, didn't forget to give Chin Fei an encouraging look as he left. Xiao Chin, in recent years, the development of martial arts in our Huaxia is not as good as before. Try to leave more good seeds for our martial arts circle in Huaxia. The few women were no longer young girls and naturally understood the meaning behind these words, their faces blushing instantly. Uncle Su, Uncle Zhu, please don't talk nonsense. I've always treated Brother Chin as my own brother, son she said, her face flushed. Zhu Quishan paused in his steps and pretended to come back. Is that so? Then in that case, let's chat with Xiao Chin a bit more. Uncle Zhu, you, you. Sun Shi's cheeks grew even redder. Mu Ning pulled Zhu Quishan aside and said, Old Zhu, you're getting up there in age, still teasing young girls. Let's go. Then, Chen Fei got up to see the others off. They made plans to meet later and discuss matters concerning the Diyuan realm. After seeing off the elders, Chen Fei's mother-in-law, Xieling Shuang, received a call from an old friend and left. So, in the spacious villa, only Chen Fei and the women remained. With no elders present, everyone relaxed and began chatting animatedly. Chen Xiling exclaimed and rushed towards Chen Fei, Master Brother, you're finally back. Although she had become the vice head of the pavilion, Chen Xiling's character remained the same, clinging to Chen Fei and not letting go. It wasn't until the other women started coughing in dissatisfaction that Chin Xiling reluctantly let go of Chin Fei. Next was Song A. At this moment, she appeared more mature, her exquisite makeup complementing the gorgeous evening gown, making her look graceful and beautiful. She approached Chin Fei and hugged him, saying softly, It's so good to see you again. Then, Zhang Chouyue came forward. She was shy by nature. So she lightly hugged Chen Fei and quickly let go, retreating to the side. Brother Chen, it's great that you're back. Then, only Wei Ling was left. She had short hair and a graceful figure, her gaze fixed directly on Chen Fei. Without any hesitation, Wei Ling stepped forward, hugged Chen Fei, and kissed him, saying, I missed you so much. There was a moment of stunned silence, followed by a burst of enthusiastic cheers. Chin Xiling, in particular, sees the opportunity to stir up trouble. Sister Chiu Wan, you're the legitimate wife. Aren't you coming? Chiu Yue, your face is so red. Do you want to try to? Sister Song, didn't you regret not expressing your feelings to my brother before? Now's your chance. Amidst the laughter and banter, the atmosphere grew even warmer. Song Yi stared at Lin Chiu Wan for a few seconds then suddenly exclaimed, Chiu Wan, you, you seem to have become much younger. As a celebrity, Song Yi was more sensitive to changes in appearance than the others. With her shout, the other women all looked over, some even reaching out to touch. You really look much younger, like you're in your 20s. Your skin is smooth and tender, like a baby's. Sister Chiu Wan, how did you do it? When it came to being young and beautiful, all the women present were interested, asking questions one after another. Lin Xiuhuan pointed at Chen Fei. So, the women crowded around him. Brother Chen, give me a treatment too. Brother, you can't be biased. I want one too. Brother Chen, look at the wrinkles on my face. Can you help me? Faced with the lively scene, Chen Fei couldn't refuse. He immediately got to work circulating his energy to help the women repair their skin. After a busy period, 
The room was filled with sounds of surprise and joy. It really works. I look several years younger. My skin is much smoother, even better than the best cosmetics I've used. It's amazing. I feel like I've gone back 10 years. Thank you. Smack. The women all gave kisses to express their gratitude. Shin Fei suddenly felt enveloped in a warm and fragrant embrace, as if he had been immersed in a soft pink ocean, feeling a bit intoxicated for a moment. Chapter 3636 After the enthusiasm subsided, Chen Fei, with a fragrant lip print on his face, sat among the women. Soon, everyone began chatting. The women were curious about Chin Fei's experiences during his absence, and he answered all their questions, briefly recounting what he had been through. Chin Fei also learned about the current situations of the women. Lin Xiuhuan and Wei Ling, needless to say, continued to manage the Autumn Group after Chin Fei left, and the company thrived even more. Until more than a decade ago, the two of them retired from the company together. After retiring, Lin Xiuhuan remained low-key, spending most of her time at home and occasionally meeting with relatives and friends. Occasionally, she would travel around the world. Wei Ling, on the other hand, remained true to her strong-willed nature. After a period of leisure, she ended up becoming a consultant at various business forums, earning a considerable reputation in the business world and enjoying herself in the process. Sunshi, needless to say, had been working at the Autumn Group with Lin Xiuhuan and Wei Ling. Over a decade ago, she succeeded Lin Xiuhuan and became the company's president. In these more than 10 years, she had managed the company quite well. Song Yi, once a well-known entertainer in the country, continued to thrive in the entertainment industry and quickly became one of the top actresses in the industry, winning almost all the Best Actress Awards. She was now one of the foremost figures in the entertainment industry. Zhang Xiaoyue, because of her exceptional singing skills, initially entered the Beijing Music Academy for studies. Later, with her outstanding singing skills, she won numerous music awards and became a beloved diva. Combined with her impressive appearance, many people suggested that she venture into the film and television industry to gain even greater fame. However, Zhang Xiaoyue was introverted and not fond of fame and fortune. Therefore, even at the height of her popularity, she remained quietly devoted to music. As she grew older, she gradually retreated and continued to stay at the Beijing Music Academy as a teacher. She was now a professor at the academy. Qin Xiling, needless to say, as Qin Fei's junior sister, had remarkable martial arts talent. After the senior members of Huawu Pavilion retired, Qin Xiling took over as the Deputy Pavilion Master of Huawu Pavilion. Upon hearing this, Qin Fei couldn't help but ask, by the way, what about Zhuo Qingyu and Mu Yuqing? Are they not in Beijing? Mu Yuqing was the daughter of the former Greenwood sect master and the current master of Huawu Pavilion. While Zhuo Qingyu was Qin Fei's disciple, possessing the Greenwood spirit body, and had outstanding talent. Like Chen Xiling, she was also the deputy pavilion master of Huawu Pavilion. Now, with Chen Xiling present, these two had yet to appear, so Chen Fei inquired about them. At the mention of this, the usually carefree Chen Xiling's expression turned serious as she said to Chen Fei, brother, sister Mu, and Qing Yu are not in the country. They are negotiating in Wanqing City. Wanqing City. Chen Fei remembered the name, a city outside the southern border of Huaxia. What are they negotiating about, and with whom? Chen Xiling explained, Well, a few years ago, Huaqing City discovered a mine. Inside, there is a special stone called King Wishi, which is useful for cultivators in the Great Xia Realm. So, our Wawu Pavilion collaborated with the locals to mine King Huishi and sell it to cultivators in the Great Xia Realm to make a profit. However, not long after the business started, disputes arose over ownership of the mine, and even foreign forces like the Holy Knights were involved. There have been minor conflicts between us, and even some small-scale physical altercations. Half a month ago, 
More than a dozen Yuan body realm martial artists from both sides clashed there, and someone even died. So, both sides agreed to negotiate and resolve the matter. Upon hearing this, Chen Fei's expression also turned serious, and he asked, Could it be dangerous? Do you need me to intervene? Chen Xiling said, Brother, it shouldn't have come to that. The Qing We Stone Mine, although good, isn't very large. Both the Huawu Pavilion and the Holy Knights are major powers. They shouldn't go to war over such a matter. Besides, Sister Mu and Qing Yu's strength speaks for itself. Even if things escalate, those foreigners may not have a good time if they start something. Qin Fei felt slightly relieved, but still advised, contact them as soon as possible and clarify the situation. If they need help, I'll go over immediately. I understand, brother, Qin Xiling replied. At this moment, Lin Xiaohuan walked over holding a mobile phone and handed it to Qin Fei. It's MOMO calling. She wants to talk to you. Qin Fei was momentarily surprised, then smiled as he took the phone and immediately recognized the familiar face on the screen. Lin Xiaohuan's cousin, Su MOMO. This young girl, dressed in sportswear, seemed to be walking in a forest, sweat dripping, with a few pages sticking to her face. Brother Chen, it's really you. You're back. Brother Chen, you haven't changed at all. My sister promised me that when you come back, you'll give me a special beauty treatment. You can't go back on your word. Chin Fei chuckled. All right, I promise you. I promise you. When are you coming back? Brother Chin, I just came out of the primitive forest at noon today and got signal. Only then did I know you're back. I've already bought a plane ticket back to the capital. I'll be back by tomorrow at the latest. Chin Fei smiled warmly and chatted with Su Moomo for a while. It turned out that Su Moomo, this girl, couldn't sit still. After leaving school, she did a lot of things. She worked in Autumn Group, tried other companies, and even ventured into the entertainment circle through Song Yi's connections. However, she didn't stick with anything for long. She found it boring and withdrew. This girl discovered her passion for traveling. With no shortage of money, she spent three years traveling to famous tourist destinations worldwide. By sharing her travel diary online, she gained considerable popularity and became an online travel blogger. At first, she did mainstream airplane and train travel to popular places. Later, she found it not exciting enough and opted for more offbeat destinations. Thus, Su MOMO gradually became more adventurous. Now, she even dared to explore primitive forests. Towards the end of their conversation, Su MOMO bid farewell on her own initiative, Brother Chin, I'm heading back to my place now. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Chin Fei smiled and handed the phone to Lin Xiao Wan. Lin Xiao Wan was about to hang up the phone when a sentence popped out from the other end. Sister Chiu Wan, take it easy tonight. Don't tire out Brother Chin or he won't have the energy to play with me tomorrow. Snap. Lin Xiaohuan gave Su Moomo a glare, her cheeks flushing as she abruptly ended the call. As a result, a group of women inside the room gathered around, joking. Sister Xiaohuan, are we disturbing you? Should we leave? What disturbance? Look at Sister Xiaohuan's expression. It's clear it's already happening. Maybe not just once. So intense. In broad daylight, Sister Chiu Wan, how does it feel? Chiu Wan, can you handle it alone? Do you need my help? A group of beauties joked around, while Chin Fei pretended not to understand, quietly sitting aside and sipping his tea. Chapter 3637 While Chin Fei was celebrating with the various beauties, back at their residence, the father and son from the Yi family, along with Elder Inno, were feeling somewhat gloomy. Yi Dongshang's face was full of resentment as he spoke up. Those guys are so audacious. Not only did they hit me, but they even dared to lay hands on your subordinates, Elder Inno. It's outrageous. Elder, we must teach them a lesson. Elder Inno sat quietly on a high-backed chair, his brow furrowed, remaining silent. Seeing this, Yi Dongxiang continued, Elder Inno, why don't we mobilize the Holy Knight stationed in Huaxia? If we all take action together, 
I don't believe those people would dare to be so arrogant. Yi Dongxiang became more and more agitated as he spoke, almost itching to go out and give those guys a good beating to avenge the humiliation. However, upon hearing this, Elder Inno frowned and coughed lightly. Yiwan noticed the change in the elder and immediately gave his son a stern look, reminding him, Dongxiang, the situation is complex, we must proceed with caution. Dad, aren't they just a bunch of washed up old women and some powerless old geezers? Even if they are powerful, can they match up to Elder Inno or the Holy Knights? Yi Dongxiang still looked unconvinced. You're still too young. You can't just judge things by their appearance, he once said. People like Li Jintian and Zhu Quishan may have stepped down, but their influence in Huaxia is still considerable. There's no need to make enemies over a trivial matter. A trivial matter? Yi Dongxiang became even more agitated. Dad, I was beaten like this. Matthews hasn't even woken up yet. Is this a trivial matter? Besides, I'm not trying to confront those people. It's the guy who attacked me. That guy couldn't possibly be anyone important, just some fling of sunshies. Yuan knew his son was impulsive and not one to back down. Previously, relying on his company's financial power and Elder Inno's martial prowess, Yi Dongxiang hadn't faced much trouble. But this time, Right after Yi Wan and his son returned to the country, they encountered trouble, and Yi Dongxiang was beaten up. For someone who had always had an easy time, this was an unprecedented event. That's why Yi Dongxiang was so agitated and angry. If it were an ordinary person, Yi Wan would have helped his son take revenge. But this time, it involved well-known women like Lin Xiuhuan and Wei Ling, and even implicated high-ranking individuals like Li Jintian and Zhu Quishan. So they had to proceed with caution. However, he couldn't explain these big principles to his son on the spot. Yiwan could only emphasize his words, speaking firmly, Dong Xiang, stop talking. Elder Inno is still here. Listen to his decision. Yi Dong Xiang, despite his arrogance, didn't dare say anything disrespectful in front of Elder Inno and could only reluctantly soften his stance, looking towards Elder Inno. After a moment of contemplation, Elder Inno finally spoke. We should refrain from rash actions for now regarding this matter. Elder, I. Yi Dongxiang was somewhat excited. Elder Inno gave him a stern look and said in a deep voice, This matter involves Vice Pavilion Master Chen Xiling of Huawu Pavilion, as well as Li Jintian and Su Jun Shan, the senior members of Huawu Pavilion. I'm concerned that this incident may affect our negotiations with Huawu Pavilion in Wanqing City. So, as a precaution, let's refrain from taking any action for now. Tomorrow, I will personally go to Wanqing City to report this matter to the commander. Inno spoke, and naturally, the matter was settled. Early the next morning, Inno took the earliest flight and rushed to Wanqing City. Yuan had a discussion with his son and then went busy with company matters. After all, their main purpose for coming to Huaxia this time was the acquisition of shares of Autumn Group by the E Group. With both the elder and father gone, Yi Dongxiang sat alone at home, growing angrier the more he thought about it. He had never endured such humiliation before in his life, and he couldn't bear it this time. You rotten scoundrel, whoever you are. If you dare to touch me, I'll make you pay the price. With that, Yi Dongxiang picked up his phone and dialed a number. Meanwhile, on Chen Fei's side, they had spent an unforgettable night with the women at the villa. The women, nourished by Chen Fei's vitality, not only seemed to have rejuvenated in appearance but also in energy. Each one displayed impressive combat prowess. It was fortunate that Chen Fei was a master at the Yuan embryo realm, with robust strength and the constitution of a dual god body. This allowed him to endure continuous battles throughout the night. At 10 o'clock in the morning, Chen Fei and the women were still lying in bed when a sudden urgent knocking at the door startled everyone awake. Getting up and dressing, Chen Fei went to the door. He saw a man in camouflage clothes, his face covered in blood, leaning against the door, continuously pounding on it. Who are you? Chen Fei asked in a deep voice. The man weakly replied, quick, call the police. Miss Su has been kidnapped. What? M.O.M.O. has been kidnapped? What happened exactly? 
A hurried footstep sounded from behind Xin Fei. Lin Xiaohuan rushed out, followed by the other women. Xin Fei acted quickly, supporting the man as he stepped out, then grasping his wrist and infusing him with vitality. With Xin Fei's treatment, the man, who had been weak, visibly improved. After just a few tens of seconds, the man's complexion returned to normal, and he regained his spirits. Miss Lin, early this morning, I was escorting Miss Su back to Beijing. But just now, at the entrance of the villa area, we were ambushed by a group of martial artists. Miss Su was abducted by them and is now missing. Zhou Ning, do you recognize the perpetrators? What is their cultivation level? Chen Xiling approached and asked. As soon as the man saw Chen Xiling, he struggled to get up to bow to her. I've seen the deputy pavilion master. Chen Xiling waved her hand, interrupting him. That's enough. It's not the time for formalities. Zhou Ning replied, there were about seven or eight of them, all martial artists, with strength around the fifth level of the Yuan embryo realm. They attacked together, and I couldn't protect Miss Su. I begged the deputy pavilion master for punishment. Chin Xiling frowned and said in a deep voice, seven or eight martial artists at the fifth level of the Yuan embryo realm. This isn't something an ordinary force can mobilize. Could it be? Everyone was still pondering the clues. At this moment, Chin Fei spoke up. Let's go check the scene. With that, Chin Fei lifted Zhou Ning, continuing to heal him, and headed towards the villa area entrance. Soon, they arrived at the villa entrance, where Zhou Ning pointed to a small grove on the left and said, It's here. At the time, Miss Su and I had just gotten out of the car, ready to enter the villa. Then, those people suddenly rushed out from this grove and attacked. I wasn't a match for them, so. Chapter 3638 Chin Fei walked towards the small grove, his vitality circulating and flickers of fire dancing in his eyes. Suddenly, the scene seemed to have an additional layer of hazy filter in Chin Fei's eyes. Invisible fluctuations of vitality, discernible only to Chin Fei's eyes, became clear and visible. Discerning Su Momo's aura from them, Shin Fei looked in a certain direction. She's over there. You all go back first. I'll go take a look. With these instructions, Chin Fei's figure disappeared like the wind in an instant. Behind him, Lin Xiao Wan and the others still wore worried expressions. Will MOMO be all right? Chin Xiling supported Lin Xiao Wan and comforted her, saying, Sister Xiao Wan, you can rest assured. Since they are kidnapping rather than directly harming, MOMO should be safe for now. Besides, Brother Chin has taken action, so everything should be fine. After comforting the women, Chin Xiling's eyes hardened, and she took out her phone, mobilize all available forces immediately, and conduct a thorough investigation of this matter. About 15 kilometers north of Lin Xiao Wan's villa area was a lush little mountain. Sparsely scattered throughout the mountains were some small villages. At this mo moment, in a farmhouse in a certain village, Yi Dongxiang looked at Su Moomo, who was tied up in front of him, with a dark expression and dissatisfaction. I told you guys to go catch that brat, but how did you end up bringing back a woman? Captain Hu, I haven't paid you any less. Is this how your men operate? Yi Dongxiang glared at a burly man in black. Captain who stepped forward immediately, explaining, Young Master E, please calm down and let me explain. This is what happened. When we arrived at the location, we ambushed for a few hours, but that guy never showed up. Later, we approached, intending to capture him directly. But unexpectedly, there were several capable guards around the villa, with strength around the 8th level of the Yuan embryo realm. We couldn't get close, and could only wait outside. Yi Dongxiang furrowed his brows in surprise. Guards at the 8th level of the Yuan embryo realm. Would they be guarding a businessman? Captain Hu said, perhaps it's because of Chen Xiling. She is the deputy pavilion master of the Huawu Pavilion and also stayed overnight in the villa, so those guards might be protecting her. Yi Dongxiang nodded slightly, agreeing with this explanation, and continued to ask, then, who is this woman? Captain who grabbed Su Momo's hair, lifting her head, and said to Yi Dongxiang, Young Master Yi, 
This woman is not an ordinary person. I've checked. Her name is Sue M.O.M.O., a very popular online travel and adventure blogger. Blogger? What's that? Yidong Xiong frowned. Captain Yu hastily explained, she also has another, more important identity. She is Lin Xiu Wan's cousin and has close ties with Chen Xiling, Xu Qingyu, Sun Shi, Zhang Chouyue, and others. What do you mean? Yidong Xiong's eyes lit up. Captain Hu added, Young Mastery, with this woman, we can threaten Lin Xiu Huan and Sun Shi to hand over that brat. And, although Su Momo is not young anymore, she is still very attractive. I even heard that she has never had a boyfriend until now. If Young Mastery is interested, perhaps. Upon hearing Captain Hu's explanation, Ido Xiong carefully appraised Su Momo. It had to be admitted that although Su Momo spent most of her time exploring and traveling, her skin had yellowed somewhat, but it hadn't really detracted from her beauty. Instead, it added a healthy aura to her. As Ido Xiong looked at her more, he felt increasingly passionate. With a wave of his hand and a command, give her a bath and send her to my room. Fifteen minutes later, Ido Xiong arrived in his room and immediately noticed Su Momo lying on the bed. The Su Momo from earlier, due to her travels and fatigue, looked a bit weary. Even so, she was still an exceptional beauty. Now, after washing up, her face appeared delicate and charming, her figure alluring. This ignited two flames in Yi Dong Xiang's eyes. Not bad. Beauty, your friend has offended me. It's your turn to make amends. Yi Dong Xiang rubbed his hands excitedly, starting to undress. Su Momo's face darkened, and she warned in a cold voice, If you dare touch me, the consequences will be more than you can bear. Oh, really? I'd like to see what those consequences are. Yi Dong Xiang's face flushed with excitement as he lunged towards the bed. Su Momo attempted to struggle, but her body was bound, and she couldn't move. She could only watch as Yi Dong Xiang approached. She pursed her lips, closed her eyes, and silently whispered to herself, let it be a nightmare. Once it's over, it will be fine. Feeling the heat approaching her, the nightmare about to strike. At this critical moment, suddenly there was a loud explosion. Su Momo opened her eyes and saw the door blasted open. A figure walked in and waved towards the bed. As if a bald pig, Idong Xiang was lifted by an invisible force and slammed violently against the wall, spitting out a mouthful of blood. Then, the figure approached, concerned. M.O.M.O. -O, I'm here. Su M.O.M.O. -O was still somewhat stunned. Upon closer inspection, she recognized the man in front of her, and her face was instantly filled with joy and tears. Tears and smiles intertwined on her face as she threw herself into his arms. Big Brother Chin, it's you. You're here. Chin Fei felt Su M.O.M.O.'s soft body and looked down, only to see a scene of snowy whiteness. Because Su Momo's movements were too vigorous, her bathrobe was disheveled and had fallen off her body. So, Chin Fei hastily draped the bathrobe over Su Momo to cover her body. At this moment, Yi Dong Xiang, who was spitting blood on the ground, crawled up, glaring angrily at Chin Fei, gritting his teeth. It's you. You dare touch me. I... Chen Fei's eyes narrowed, and he kicked out directly, hitting Yi Dong Xiang in the chest, flipping him over onto the ground. Then, his gaze turned icy, and he demanded sternly, Speak, who orchestrated this? What's the purpose? I'll kill you. I'll kill you. Yi Dong Xiang kept shouting. Chen Fei frowned, cracking his knuckles, and broke Yi Dong Xiang's legs with a crack, crack. Speak. Now, Yi Dong Xiang was truly scared. And during the intense pain, he nodded repeatedly, revealing his plan in detail, even mentioning his father, Yi Wan, and Elder Eno's involvement. Listening, Chen Fei's gaze turned colder. The Holy Knights are the backbone of the E group, so Yi Wan can develop so rapidly overseas. This time back in the country, the E group is acquiring shares of the Autumn Group. It's the Holy Knights trying to enter China and compete with the Huawu Pavilion. Yi Dong Xiong nodded, his face full of snot and tears, pleading, 
I've told you everything I know. Spare my life. Chen Fei nodded gently, raised his right hand, and pointed at Yidong Xiang. A burst of energy shot out, piercing through his heart. Yidong Xiang's face froze, and with a snap, he fell to the ground, breathless. Chapter 3639 The secretary briskly entered the conference room and found Yi Wan, who was in a meeting. Bending over, she hurriedly said, Mr. E, there's an urgent call for you. Yi Wan frowned and said, Didn't I say? This meeting is very important. Whatever the call is about, it can wait until after the meeting. Leave immediately. Yi Wan waved his hand to dismiss her. Lowering her voice, the secretary said, Mr. E, it's a call from the police. They said something happened to Yi Xiao. What? Yi Wan was startled, then whispered, Dong Xiang again? Different from before, let the lawyer handle it. Shaking her head, the secretary said, Mr. E, the police said Yi Xiao's body was found at a rural farmhouse. What? He? Yi Wan was shocked, then abruptly stood up, glaring fiercely at the secretary. However, halfway through speaking, he realized it was inappropriate. Apologizing to everyone present, he quickly left. Sorry, everyone, something urgent has come up. Let's end the meeting here. We'll discuss it next time. Exiting the conference room, Iwan's steps were urgent as he hastily asked, What exactly happened? Who killed Dong Xiao? The secretary quickly recounted the events. Mystery. According to the police, early this morning, Yi Xiao masterminded a kidnapping of a travel blogger. A conflict arose when a courageous citizen intervened, resulting in Yi Xiao's death. What travel blogger? What courageous citizen? This is nonsense. Yi Wan furrowed his brow angrily. The secretary hurriedly explained in a low voice, Mr. Yi, the travel blogger is named Su Momo, Lin Xiu Wan's cousin, closely related to Sun Shi. And that courageous citizen is Chen Fei, the young man who injured Yi Xiao yesterday. What? Hearing the familiar name, Yi Wan's expression changed. Then he said in a deep voice, This is clearly not a kidnapping case. It's malicious retaliation from Chen Fei. Immediately get the best lawyer. I won't rest until this matter is resolved. However, the secretary's tone stiffened as she explained in a low voice, Mr. E. Autumn Group has already hired 10 of the most renowned lawyers in China to defend Shen Fei. At the same time, retired veterans like Li Zhentian and Su Junshan have spoken out, demanding a thorough investigation into such malicious cases and severe punishment for criminals. So, we. Yuan's anger froze on his face, his expression stiffening. Although Yi's group was powerful, its business was mainly overseas. Autumn Group, on the other hand, was an absolute giant in China's domestic market. He wanted almost no chance of winning against Autumn Group in a lawsuit here. Suppressing his anger, Yi Wan lowered his voice and said firmly, if the direct approach won't work, then we'll use indirect methods. Issue an underground assassination order, offering a 10 billion earth coin reward to kill Chen Fei. However, the secretary remained unmoved. After a moment's pause, she hesitantly explained, Mystery. This, this may not be effective. What do you mean by not effective? Yi Wan was furious. The secretary hurriedly said, while Autumn Group formed a legal team, Huawu Pavilion issued a public statement, declaring their admiration for the courageous citizen and offering 24-hour protection to Chen Fei. If anyone dares to harm Chen Fei, they will be against Huawu Pavilion. What? Huawu Pavilion? Autumn Group? They? Yuan was momentarily enraged, his eyes bloodshot, his fists clenched as he fiercely slammed the table. So, did my son Dou Xiang die in vain? The secretary lowered her head, stepping back, afraid to speak, fearing Yuan's rage would turn on her. Crash. Bang. In the office, Yuan went on a rampage, almost destroying the entire office, before finally calming down and instructing the secretary in a deep voice. Give me a ticket to Wanching City, the fastest one. Meanwhile, on Chen Fei's side, after rescuing Sumomo, they cooperated with relevant departments, went through the proper procedures, and then returned to the villa. The group of women surrounded them, 
anxiously inquiring about Momo's condition. The camouflage-clad man, Zhou Ning, stepped forward to apologize once again. He was a member of the Huawu Pavilion, dispatched by Chen Xiling to protect Su Momo. He felt extremely guilty about the incident. Chen Xiling and Su Momo comforted him verbally, making Zhou Ning feel much better, and he went to recuperate. Then, a call came in. Su Momo answered and couldn't help but slap her forehead. So many things happening here. I almost forgot. Okay, send the person over. Momo, what's going on? Who's coming? Is it urgent? Should we decline? Is it dangerous? Should we send someone to protect you? Su Momo smiled with narrowed eyes. Don't worry, it's nothing dangerous. It's actually a little surprise. You'll find out soon. About half an hour later, one of Su Momo's female assistants brought a young girl to the villa. Now, the group of women surrounded the girl, examining her. The girl looked to be about 11 or 12 years old, slender and petite, with a slightly yellowish complexion and somewhat rough hair, indicating a less than privileged life. However, when the women's gazes fell upon the girl's face, they couldn't help but collectively exclaim in admiration. So beautiful. Ah, so charming. Is this really a girl in her early teens? I feel like I've seen a legendary fox spirit. The words were somewhat excited but not exaggerated. At this moment, although the girl was young, her face was exceptionally beautiful and alluring, without any makeup, giving off a natural charm as if she were the legendary enchantress Daji. Even the beautiful women present couldn't help but sigh in amazement. Momo. Where did you find such a beauty? This girl is too beautiful. Who is she? Momo, is this your daughter? When did you have a secret child outside? And she's this big. Su so Momo glared at Shin Xiling and said, Xiling, you're the only one who would say something like that. Her name is Yu Jing. I happened to meet her during my adventure this time. Yu Jing had encountered some trouble. I helped her solve it and then brought her back. Happened to meet. What happened? The women hurriedly asked. At this point, Su Momo glanced at the girl and said softly, Yu Jing, you must be tired from the journey. Why don't you rest for a while? The girl was very sensible and nodded gently. So, Lin Chiohan found her a bedroom, and she went to rest. The women returned to the living room, their gazes gathering on Su Momo. Momo, can you tell us now? What happened to Yu Jing? At this, Su Momo couldn't help but sigh. Chapter 3640 Then, Su Momo recounted the process of encountering Yu Jing. After finishing the call with Chan Fei yesterday, Su Momo immediately rushed to the big city near the forest, preparing to buy the earliest flight ticket to return to the capital. By the time she arrived in the big city, it was already late at night, and the earliest flight was still several hours away. So, Su Momo found a nearby hotel to rest for a few hours. As she was heading to the hotel, Su Momo saw a little girl in tattered clothes squatting by the hotel flower bed, looking very pitiful. At that time, there were two men beside the girl, bargaining with her, talking about prices and playing together. Seeing this scene, Su Momo naturally knew what was going on and immediately rushed forward to drive away the two men, rescuing the little girl. After some questioning, the little girl remained silent, not saying a word. Thinking she might be scared, Su Momo brought her back to the hotel and helped her clean up. With a change of clothes, Yu Jing washed away the dirt on her face, revealing her true beauty, which amazed Su Momo. Then, Sumomo prepared dinner for the little girl and carefully asked about her situation, finally learning some information about her. The little girl's name was Yu Jing, she was not from China, and she had arrived in China about half a month ago. However, something seemed to have happened later on, and the people around her left, leaving her alone. Being unfamiliar with the place and having no Chinese currency, she found it difficult to survive. By selling some personal belongings, Yu Jing managed to get by for a few days. 
Later, when she ran out of money, she encountered a so-called talent scout agency on the roadside, inviting her to become a star and promising to provide food and accommodation. Being extremely hungry, the little girl didn't think much and naturally agreed. However, after entering the agency, she quickly discovered something was wrong. The boss locked her in a room and didn't allow her to leave. Later, the boss came in, took a few photos and videos of her, and then left. By chance, Yu Jing overheard the boss talking on the phone, mentioning her name and discussing prices. Now, even though Yu Jing was young, she realized she had been deceived. So when the person took her out, she took advantage of the moment when they were relaxed and escaped on her own. She wandered the streets for a few days and somehow ended up here until she met Su Momo. Upon hearing this, Su Momo was furious and wished she could rush to that so-called talent scout agency and eliminate them on the spot. However, Yu Jing didn't know the identity of the people there or exactly where it was. Plus, Su Momo was in a hurry to return to the capital, so she had to let the matter go. Originally, Su Momo had intended to hand Yu Jing over to the local police, preferably to find her relatives. However, after hearing everything, Yu Jing shook her head repeatedly and hugged Su Momo tightly, indicating she was willing to stay with her. Su Momo, who was already emotionally moved, was even more touched by this beautiful little girl's dependence on her so she immediately brought Yu Jing back with her. Early this morning, after arriving in the capital, Su Momo handed Yu Jing over to her assistant and asked her to help find out Yu Jing's identity information while she hurried to the villa. Unexpectedly, she encountered the kidnapping attempt by Yi Dongxiang, but fortunately, everything turned out fine in the end. After listening to Su Momo's story, everyone present was deeply moved. This poor little girl, luckily she met you, Su Momo, otherwise, I dare not imagine what would have happened. The little girl is so beautiful, she will definitely attract a lot of trouble. However, taking her away like this directly doesn't seem right. What if her relatives or friends are looking for her? At this point, Su Momo couldn't help but sigh. I asked the assistant to help find out about Yu Jing but we couldn't find any information in our Chinese system. We couldn't find her. Does that mean Yu Jing is not Chinese? I think Yu Jing really looks a bit different from us Chinese, like she might be of mixed race. Could it be an illegitimate child, abandoned? Momo, have you asked her yourself? She should know who her parents are, right? The women hurriedly asked. Su Momo shook her head, sighed, and said, from last night until early this morning, I talked to her a lot. But Yu Jing seems to have suffered a brain injury. Her recent memories are from half a month ago when she found herself in China, and her family was nowhere to be found. She only remembers what happened after that. As for what happened before, she can't recall. This. How could this happen? Could it be some strange illness? Or maybe she encountered trouble, and the little girl got scared and lost her memory? The women frowned in disgust, feeling quite sympathetic towards this beautiful little girl. Then Lin Xiuhuan thought of something and looked at Chen Fei, saying, Chen Fei, why don't you take a look at Yu Jing? Chen Fei nodded and said, sure. Su Momo also suddenly realized and slapped her forehead, right? Brother-in-law, you're so skilled in medicine, you can definitely help Yu Jing. Let me call her. Soon. Su Momo brought the little girl in front of Chen Fei. Yu Jing, this is brother Chen Fei. He's very capable. Be good and let him examine you. Maybe you'll remember something from before. The little girl timidly glanced at Chen Fei, nodded, and walked over. Chen Fei held the little girl's hand and began to pulse diagnose. After more than 10 seconds, Chen Fei's brow slightly furrowed, his expression changed but he didn't speak. After about half a minute, Chen Fei let go of her hand. Brother-in-law, how is Yu Jing? Is she sick? Can she be cured? Chen Fei shook his head and said, according to my diagnosis, 
Yu Jing is not sick. Her body is very healthy. Not sick? Then what's going on? Was she really scared into losing her memory? Yu Jing, do you not remember anything from before? Nothing at all. The little girl pursed her lips, shook her head, and whispered, I, I don't remember. Seeing the worried frowns of the women, Sumomo waved her hand and said, If she can't remember, let it go. There's no need to frown. Worst case, Yu Jing will stay with me from now on. I happen to have such a little sister. With that, Su Momo hugged Yu Jing and asked with a smile, Yu Jing, will you follow your sister from now on? The little girl trusted Su Momo very much and nodded earnestly, saying, Yes, I'll follow Momo. Following Momo is good. But Momo, how old are you? Still calling yourself sister, isn't that embarrassing? Shin Xiling joked. Su Momo immediately glared, Xiling, you dare to say that to me, you're even more mature than me. But I'm younger. Chin Xiling intentionally touched her cheek. Su Momo was about to say something when she noticed that the faces of the women around her seemed to have become more than 10 years younger. She exclaimed, Ah, what did you all do? How did you all become younger? Tell me. Ask my brother. Chin Xiling pointed to Chin Fei. Su Momo immediately rushed over and hugged Chin Fei, leaning her soft body against his arm, coquettishly saying, Brother-in-law, help me. I also want to become younger and more beautiful. Okay, okay. I promise you. I promise you. Feeling that softness, Chen Fei didn't dare to play with fire and quickly agreed. Suddenly, there was a burst of exclamations and laughter in the room. Chapter 3641 Next, Chen Fei and the group of women spent another day in the villa. The next morning, Everyone reluctantly bid farewell and went home. Chen Fei and Lin Xiu Huan sent off the group of women together. Before they could turn around and enter the house, two soldiers in uniform approached. They saluted Chen Fei and said, Mr. Chen, hello. We are here on Mr. Li's orders to invite you, Mr. Chen, to gather at the Red Wall. Regarding this matter, Li Zhentian had mentioned it to Qin Fei over the phone last night, so Qin Fei nodded and said, Hmm, I understand. Immediately, Qin Fei went back inside to change clothes, bid farewell to his wife Lin Chou Wan, and then got on the specially made vehicle. An hour later, the vehicle entered the red wall smoothly without any obstruction. Arriving in front of a quaint office, Qin Fei walked in. Inside, Li Zhentian, Song Xu, Su Junshan, Zhu Kuishin, and Mu Ningbian were all present. Upon seeing Chen Fei, they immediately got up to greet him. Xiao Chen, you finally came. Quick, take a seat. It's been two days already. Us old folks have been anxious to see you. Chen Fei was pushed to the main seat by everyone, and after everyone settled down, Li Jintian spoke to the others. Then two middle-aged men walked in. With smiles on their faces, they shook hands with Chin Fei and greeted him. These two are. Chin Fei curiously asked. Zhu Quishan explained on the side, Xiao Chin, these two are the leaders of this generation at the Red Wall. They are also very interested in your affairs in the local domain, so they wanted to hear it together. Chin Fei understood their identities immediately, smiled in acknowledgement, and then sat down. Li Shintian said, Xiao Chen, this is not a formal meeting, so let's skip those complicated procedures. Chen Fei nodded. Then, they started chatting. First, Chen Fei briefly introduced his experiences in the local domain over the past few decades. This talk lasted for almost three hours. However, everyone listened with great interest. Especially the two leaders, who listened very attentively, even occasionally jotting down notes in their notebooks. After finishing the recount of his experiences, taking a sip of water and a short break, the meeting continued. Next, it was mainly Li Zhentian and the others asking specific questions, especially about the local domain's powers, martial arts, economy, and life, among other aspects. 
Chen Fei answered based on his own knowledge. Incidentally, Chen Fei also talked about his experiences in the Great Flame Realm. Like this, the meeting went on for almost two more hours, and the morning passed by. Chen Fei also inquired about the current situation on Earth. From their mouths, he learned that since the opening of the Connection Channel 30 years ago, the development of martial arts on Earth has become increasingly prosperous, with martial artists and various cultivation techniques, martial skills, and resources from other realms spreading to Earth, fostering mutual exchange. This has led to a rapid development of martial arts throughout the Earth. During these 30 years, many emerging martial forces have risen. Indeed, these martial forces, to some extent, have gradually replaced the positions of former nations. Among the most well-known martial powers, there are the Holy Knights, the Bitter Sea Sect, the Illuminating Society, and the Huaxia's own Huawu Pavilion, which Shen Fei had heard of. The Huawu Pavilion inevitably faced challenges. Although it continued to develop, its pace was not as fast as other martial forces. It had been caught up with and even begun to enter the scope of Huaxia. Hearing this, Chen Fei's expression darkened, and he said, So, the recent negotiations between the Hua Wu Pavilion and the Holy Knights in Wanqing City are also because of this. Song Xu nodded and said, You could say that. In recent years, the Hua Wu Pavilion and other martial forces have occasionally had some minor conflicts. Basically, it's these martial forces wanting to enter our Hua Xia region that's causing it. After all, whether it's the martial population or martial resources, Huaxia is top-notch on Earth. No one wants to miss out. Chen Fei furrowed his brows and asked, Can't the Huawu Pavilion fight back? Speaking of this, Li Jintian sighed with some disappointment. At the beginning, the Huawu Pavilion naturally had the upper hand and could withstand the probing attacks from these forces. But in recent years, they have risen too fast, and their martial strength has progressed rapidly. Behind them, it seems there is support from practitioners from outside. And our Huawu Pavilion can only rely on the Huaxia of Earth itself. So, practitioners from outside, you mean? Practitioners from the Great Flame Realm, the Great Xia Realm, and even the local domain have participated. Chen Fei said. Li Jintian nodded. It's almost certain. It's just that we currently don't have concrete evidence in hand. Beside him, Song Shu said in a deep voice, even if there is evidence, it's useless. After all, no one stipulates that practitioners from outside are not allowed to help. But if that's the case, our Huawu Pavilion will definitely fall behind gradually and may even be swallowed up by them in the end. There was a sigh from Zhu Quishin, then he looked at Chen Fei. Seeing this, Chen Fei paused for a moment, then understood Zhu Quishan's meaning. After a brief thought, Chen Fei said, I understand everyone's meaning. Since other martial forces can get help from practitioners from outside, then our Wawu Pavilion naturally can get help too. Xiao Chen, you promised to provide assistance. Zhu Quishan suddenly became excited. Chen Fei said, Mr. Zhu, I still need to report this matter to the two masters of the Great Ming Prefecture. But I guess they will agree. That's great. Xiao Chen, thank you so much. Zhu Quishan smiled. The other old men also smiled and thanked one by one. Chen Fei suddenly felt speechless. Mr. Zhu, are you all acting together to fool me? Zhu Quishan patted Chen Fei on the shoulder and laughed. Xiao Chen, you're thinking too much. We're not acting, we're telling the truth, just exaggerating a bit, just a bit. Amidst laughter, Chen Fei suddenly remembered something and asked, By the way, why didn't I see my master and Lord Qingmu? At this, Zhu Quishan spoke up, Xiao Chen, those two old guys are quite free-spirited, so don't worry about them. Yeah, not long after the channel was opened, Lord Qingmu and Lord Xianyuan couldn't hold back any longer. After retiring, they immediately entered the channel and went to explore other realms. The two of them were the first batch of people to leave Earth after the channel opened. Now, they don't even know where they've ended up.
This time, Qin Fei was genuinely surprised. Lord Qingmu and my master went to other realms. Won't it be dangerous? Don't worry, Xiao Qin. Those two old guys, you know their strength. They were top-notch on Earth back then, and after the channel opened, they further advanced. When they left, they had already reached the seventh stage of the Elemental Soul Realm. They'll be fine. Moreover, they will occasionally send messages back. Now, Chen Fei felt relieved. I wonder if Lord Qingmu and my master went to the local domain? I wonder if there's a chance to meet them. Chapter 3642 After the meeting, Chen Fei politely declined the invitation to have dinner with the others and went straight home. However, on the way, he suddenly received a call from Lin Xiu Wan. Wife, I'm on my way back. I'm not at home. I'll send you an address. Can you come over? Lin Xiu Huan said. Chen Fei replied, Sure, wife, I'll come right away. After hanging up the phone, Chen Fei followed the navigation on his phone and hurried over. Ah, this is... Chen Fei looked at the storefront with a sign that read photography and couldn't help but be stunned. Lin Xiu Wan walked over, gently took Chen Fei's hand, and softly said, I want to take a wedding photo with you. A wedding photo. Chen Fei was somewhat surprised. Lin Xiu Wan whispered, We've been married for so long, but we've never taken wedding photos. Later, you left, and I grew older. I thought we would never have the chance to take wedding photos together again. Unexpectedly, you came back, and I became younger again, thanks to heaven's blessing. I don't want to miss this opportunity. I want to capture the most beautiful moment of me as a bride, like everyone else. Chen Fei's heart softened. He looked down at Lin Xiu Huan, held her hand, and said, Xiu Huan, I'm sorry. I've made you suffer these years. I... Lin Xiu Huan shook her head gently, smiling. I haven't suffered. Being able to marry you is my greatest luck. All right. Stop being sweet. Even the single dogs on the roadside are about to vomit. Just as the atmosphere was thickening, a voice interrupted, breaking the mood. Chen Fei looked up and saw Su Momo standing with her hands on her hips, jumping out. Momo, what are you doing here? Su Momo frowned slightly, displeased. Brother-in-law, what are you saying? I helped my sister find this shop. Besides, I also want to take wedding photos, you know? After speaking, Su Momo blinked at Chen Fei and approached him actively. Chen Fei dared not respond. I'm waiting for you. Let's go in quickly. Lin Xiu Huan smiled. The staff in the shop were very professional and quickly started the shoot. They changed more than 20 outfits, constantly changing. There was no need to mention Lin Xiu Huan. With her appearance and figure, she looked stunning no matter what she wore. As for Chen Fei, although he had a good temperament, he was not used to facing the camera, which made him feel a bit awkward. Fortunately, the photographer was professional, and the results were very good. During the shoot, Su Momo even changed into a wedding dress and came in to take a few pictures together. So, the afternoon passed like this. After Chen Fei and Lin Xiu Huan selected the photos, they were about to leave. However, there was a commotion nearby. Beauty, don't listen to him. He's just a fraud. What are you doing? Trying to cause trouble? Fraud, if you don't leave, I'll call the police. Call the police, haha, joke. Do you think your earth police dare to arrest me? Haha. I don't care. Anyway, you better not try to deceive people. Chen Fei walked closer and saw Su Momo arguing with a young man with fiery red hair. Next to the two of them was a young girl in her early 20s, looking at them with a tangled expression on her face. You nosy woman, mind your own business, or you'll regret it. The man with fiery red hair got angry and swung his hand directly, aiming to slap Su Momo. Smack. However, 
Before his hand could reach her face, he felt a searing pain on his own face, leaving a bright red palm print. How dare you hit me? The man glared fiercely at Shin Fei, his fist coming down hard. Die. Bang. Shin Fei kicked out, knocking the man to the ground. On the side, Lin Xiaohuan hurried over and asked Momo, Momo, what's going on? Su Momo pointed angrily at the man with fiery red hair and said, I heard this guy making a phone call just now. He's a fraud, pretending to be in love with girls, but actually just trying to scam them for money and leave. You're talking nonsense, I. The man held from the ground. Chin Fei stepped on him, silencing him. I didn't ask you to speak. Then, Chin Fei looked at the delicate girl and asked, Is he your boyfriend? The girl was somewhat frightened, her voice trembling. Yes, he is. We met a week ago. He said he was a prince from the Great Flame Realm, fell in love with me at first sight, and wanted to take me to the Great Flame Realm to be a princess. Today he brought me here to take wedding photos, but... A prince from the Great Flame Realm, and you believe such ridiculous words. Sumomo looked at the girl. I, I... The girl was at a loss for words, clearly reluctant to admit her vanity. Meanwhile, the man with fiery red hair took out a small booklet resembling a passport from his pocket and said, I really come from the Great Flame Realm. You earthlings have no right to touch me. I warn you, let me go immediately and apologize to me obediently. Otherwise, causing a dispute between Earth and the Great Flame Realm, you won't be able to afford the consequences. Lin Xiaohuan picked up the booklet, flipped through it, and exclaimed, He really is from the Great Flame Realm. What's wrong? Feeling scared now? Release me quickly, otherwise. The man with fiery red hair became more arrogant. Chin Fei sneered and threw the booklet at the man's face, asking, You said you're a prince from the Great Flame Realm. Then tell me, which country and which king's son are you? The man with fiery red hair hesitated for a moment, then loudly declared, I am the 18th son of King Luang of the Sun Country. Our Sun Country is incredibly powerful in the Great Flame Realm. We can easily destroy your Earth. You. The Sun Country. Ha ha. Little liar. You've exposed yourself. Chen Fei laughed. The Sun Country was destroyed by the other four countries more than 30 years ago. Now the biggest country in the Great Flame Realm is the Southland Country. And before the Sun Country was destroyed, the king's name was on Lu, not Loyong. Now, do you have anything else to say? The man with fiery red hair was dumbfounded. How do you know about the situation in the Great Flame Realm? Who are you? Shen Fei didn't explain. He just casually displayed a set of martial arts. The man with fiery red hair was even more surprised. The martial arts of Xuanlin City, from the Autumn Lake Martial Hall. You, are you a disciple of the Autumn Lake Martial Hall? Chen Fei didn't answer. He lightly tapped his fingertips, and a burst of energy shot between the man's legs. Get out of here immediately. If I see you again, you're dead for sure. Chen Fei warned coldly. The man with fiery red hair, clutching his crotch in agony, dared not resist. After all, since the Southland country became the largest country in the Great Flame Realm, the status of Xuanlin City had also risen, and the Autumn Lake Martial Hall had developed and grown, becoming famous throughout the Southland country. If the person in front of him was really a disciple of the Autumn Lake Martial Hall, then he, a jobless wanderer in the Great Flame Realm, was simply not worth mentioning. So, enduring the pain, the man with fiery red hair crawled away. Then, everyone looked at the delicate girl and reminded her, be more discerning in the future and pay attention to people. Thank you, thank you. The girl thanked them and then left. Chapter 3643 After leaving the bridal shop, Chen Fei accompanied Lin Xiu Wan and Su Momo to have dinner together. At the dinner table, everyone inevitably discussed the recent encounter. Chun Fei learned that since the passage opened 30 years ago and people from other three realms came in, 
similar incidents had been happening continuously. Especially in recent years, such phenomena had been increasing. The official reports of Earth women being deceived kept increasing every year. After all, for most people, these cultivators from outside, whether in strength or status, were much stronger than Earth's warriors. So, with just a few sweet words, or even just holding hands, they could deceive many women. The so-called Prince of the Great Yin Realm they encountered this time had a rather crude plan, which could be seen with a bit of wisdom. Some of the outsiders with certain identities had deceived many Earth women after a little bit of embellishment, including some well-known women. Among these people, the most popular were the cultivators from the Earth Elemental Realm. After all, after 30 years of development, Earth's people gradually understood. The Great Yin Realm, the Great Xia Realm, and Earth were all once considered small worlds in the eyes of the Earth Elemental Realm. And the Earth Elemental Realm was the supreme existence. Therefore, just about anyone from the Earth Elemental Realm could deceive many people on Earth. Among them, one event that occurred three years ago shocked the world. A master from the Earth Elemental Realm came down, claiming to be the second son of a certain Marquis of the Great Yin Mansion in the Earth Elemental Realm, with considerable cultivation strength. He caused a sensation on Earth as soon as he arrived, attracting countless followers. In the end, the second son wandered on Earth for three months, during which he received enthusiastic hospitality from countless people in terms of money, material goods, and beautiful women. Even at the end, he took away a saintess from a certain Western holy place. Originally, everyone thought this was a good opportunity. But half a year later, someone accidentally got news from another caravan from the Earth Elemental Realm. That so-called second son of the Marquis turned out to be a rogue cultivator from the Earth Elemental Realm, basically just a fraud. As for that saintess, after being tired of playing with that rogue cultivator, she was sold to a brothel and was ruthlessly violated. After learning this news, the Holy Land was shocked, spending a lot of money, and finally managed to hire cultivators from the Earth Elemental Realm to rescue the saintess back from the Earth Elemental Realm. However, by that time, the Sanus had been ruined, completely becoming useless. Even though the Holy Land spent resources to treat and recuperate her, the Sanus only lasted less than half a year before she passed away. This incident caused a heated discussion throughout the Earth, and many sects and forces intensified their efforts to identify fraudsters and strengthen propaganda among the people. However, in less than two years, the trend that had started quickly heated up again. People's filter for cultivators from the three realms thickened once more. As a result, more people fell victim to deception again. After Lin Xiaohuan finished speaking, she couldn't help but sigh. Chen Fei also frowned. On the side, Su Momo, seeing this, patted them and said with a smile, Sister, brother-in-law. Today is the great day for your wedding photos, let's not talk about these distressing things. Yes, today is a good day, let's not talk about these. Chin Fei smiled and raised his glass. After a sumptuous dinner, Chin Fei returned to the villa with Lin Xiu Huan and Su Momo, who were slightly drunk. The next day, Chin Fei received a call from Chin Xiling early in the morning. The clamorous voice of his junior sister was more effective than an alarm clock, instantly waking Shin Fei up. Senior brother, bro. You've been back for several days already, won't you come to see me? Brother, you are the founder of Huawu Pavilion. Don't you want to see how Huawu Pavilion is doing now? Brother, come quickly, we at Huawu Pavilion are all looking forward to your arrival. Unable to withstand Chen Xiling's bombardment of messages, Chen Fei could only agree. After getting up and freshening up, bidding farewell to Lin Xiaohuan with a kiss, Chen Fei headed out to Huawu Pavilion. Compared to when he left, the headquarters of Huawu Pavilion had been expanded, 
not only adding various teaching buildings but also increasing many specialized martial arts training grounds, appearing quite impressive. Just as he walked through the gate, a large square appeared in front of Chin Fei. In the center of the square stood a humanoid statue over 20 meters tall. The person on the statue had a determined face, looking straight ahead, right hand raised, pointing to the sky, appearing resolute and vigorous. Many young people walked through the square, and from their aura, they should all be students of Huawu Pavilion. When these students passed by the statue, many of them stopped and stood still, solemnly saluting the statue, showing great respect. Seeing this, Chen Fei couldn't help but ask, who is the statue of? Why salute? Several students heard this and glared at Chen Fei, looking displeased. A burly man said in a deep voice, Brother, I don't think you are from our Wawu Pavilion. This is our Wawu Pavilion's founder, also the number one person on Earth back then, and also the savior of Earth, Master Chen Fei. We salute to express our respect for Master Chen. Chen Fei was stunned, looking bewildered. The burly man thought Chen Fei was surprised and finally left with a reminder, turning away. Here, you better not speak out of turn. Otherwise, you might get beaten. Chen Fei touched his nose, somewhat surprised that he had a statue erected for himself in Huawu Pavilion, along with so many titles. However, just as Chen Fei was about to bypass the statue, whispers came from beside him. Lu Hao is meddling again. As a disciplinary committee member, it's one thing to educate our own people in Huawu Pavilion. But he even dares to lecture outsiders. It's ridiculous. Look at his serious appearance. Who knows if he's acting or not? These outdated matters have been brought up repeatedly over the years. Yeah, the Holy Knights, the Bitter Sea Sect, they have all surpassed our Huawu Pavilion. What's there to boast about? This kind of propaganda needs a bit of exaggeration, you know. Just listen and ignore it, but some people actually take it seriously, heh. Don't speak recklessly, the bunch from the disciplinary supervision committee might hear and criticize, deducting points. These words fell into Chin Fei's ears, making his expression slightly somber as he pondered. When he left, Huawu Pavilion was the top martial force in China and even on Earth, with numerous strong individuals virtually dominating the globe. At that time, the students of Huawu Pavilion were almost all confident and ambitious. But now, although Huawu Pavilion still ranked among the top martial forces on Earth, the students here seemed to harbor doubts about the academy itself. It seems that the situation in Huawu Pavilion is even worse than rumored. Chen Fei sighed inwardly and walked towards the main building behind the square. Chapter 3644 Walking into the main building, Chen Fei still hadn't seen Chen Xiling. He couldn't help but mutter, This little girl, didn't she invite me to visit? Why can't I see anyone? Chen Fei walked deeper into the corridor, preparing to find someone to ask where the deputy chamber master's office was. Just then, a group of men and women, with anxious expressions, hurriedly walked out. Everyone, is something wrong? Chen Fei asked casually. Who are you? Asked a middle-aged man. I'm a friend of Deputy Chamber Master Chen Xiling. Do you know where she is? Chen Fei asked. Deputy Chamber Master? The man glanced at Chen Fei and said, The Deputy Chamber Master is at the Martial Arts Training Ground. Something happened over there, and we're about to go. Join us. Something happened. Chen Fei's mind stirred but he didn't inquire further and followed along. So, the group quickly headed towards the training ground. Just now, the middle-aged man pulled aside a few others and kept advising, teachers you, when Zhoning Yuan just enrolled, you were his teacher. This time, you must persuade him well. We must try our best to keep people. If we fail this time, it's not just about losing a talented student, but also a loss to the reputation of our Wawu chamber and its dozens of members. Do you understand? Everyone nodded, their expressions becoming more serious. Director Huang, 
I heard that the other party's offer is very tempting, and we can't match it. Moreover, Deputy Chamber Master Chin has also ordered not to use price increases to retain people. Joining Yuan is very proud, and it might be difficult to persuade him. Listening to these conversations, Chin Fei vaguely sensed something. They arrived at the martial arts training ground. At a glance, Chin Fei saw Chin Xiling standing in the center of the field. Opposite her stood a middle-aged couple, accompanied by a tall and handsome young man with an air of arrogance. It seemed to be a family of three. Behind them, there were seven or eight similar family groups. At this moment, Chin Xiling was speaking to the group of middle-aged men and women in front of her. Her expression was serious, and the conversation didn't seem very pleasant. Deputy Chamber Master Chin, teachers you, they're here. Director Huang quickly walked over, followed by several other teachers, and began chatting with the group on the other side. Chin Xiling turned her head and noticed Chin Fei behind the crowd. Brother, you're here. Chin Fei nodded slightly and asked softly, What's going on? Chin Xiling pointed to the tall and handsome boy opposite them and quickly explained, He's joining you in, the most talented student we've received at the Huawu Chamber in the past decade. Just turned 18, and his martial arts cultivation has reached the eighth stage of the elemental body realm. His future is limitless. He's a key talent we've been nurturing at the Huawu Chamber. However, suddenly, people from the Brightness Association came and offered generous conditions to poach Shoning Yuan and others. The others behind him, although not as good as Shoning Yuan, are also among the top talents in the past few years at our Huawu Chamber. If these students are poached by the Brightness Association, our Huawu Chamber will suffer a great loss. In the future, we may truly be left behind by the Holy Knights in the Brightness Association. Chen Fei's brows furrowed slightly after hearing this. Just then, the voices across suddenly grew louder. Zhoning Yuan loudly declared, Teacher Zhu, there's no need for persuasion. My mind is made up. Teacher Zhu, with a serious tone, said, Ning Yuan, if you feel there are areas where we could improve, we can discuss and make changes. We will nurture you as the absolute core disciple of the Huawu Chamber. These words were already quite humble. A renowned martial arts academy was coaxing a student in such a manner. But Zhoning Yuan remained expressionless, even adding a hint of sarcasm as he spoke. Teacher Zhu, let me be frank with you. In my opinion, the Huawu Chamber is already outdated and its strength cannot keep up, and it may even deteriorate further in the future. The core disciples of the Huawu Chamber are completely inferior to those of the Brightness Association and the Holy Knights. Teacher Zhu, you are intelligent and should understand my choice. Oh, this. Teacher Zhu was momentarily speechless. Director Huang, beside them, expressed his dissatisfaction, zoning you in, what nonsense are you talking about? Regardless of anything, our Wawu Chamber is among the top three martial arts organizations in the world. If you don't understand it yourself, don't mislead others. Top three in the world. Ha ha. Zhoning Yuan laughed at these words and shook his head. Director Huang, it's forgivable that ignorant junior students like you don't understand. But now, you're trying to deceive me. Don't you find that laughable? In recent years, in various martial arts competitions, our Wawu Chamber has only managed to reach the top three a few times. And, in the recent conflicts with the Holy Knights, it seems we've suffered quite a bit. Director Huang, I'm already an adult, so stop trying to fool people with these words. You. Director Huang was so angry that his face turned red, glaring fiercely at Zhoning Yuan. Zhoning Yuan's parents then stepped forward, waving their hands, Deputy Chamber Master Chin, we've already made ourselves clear. Let's leave it at that. I hope the Huawu Chamber can process Ning Yuan's procedures as soon as possible. Chin Xiling's expression darkened upon hearing this. At this moment, teachers you said, Ning Yuan, when you were young and came from a poor background, it was our Huawu Chamber that discovered you, solved your living problems, and carefully nurtured you to where you are now. 
Do you really have no feelings for the Huawei chamber? Teacher Zhu, that's enough. Joning Yuan waved his hand, interrupting, Stop with the emotional talk. It makes me sick. You're saying all this just for money, aren't you? Don't worry. Elder Kinney of the Brightness Association has promised to cover the Huawei Chamber's training fees for me. Teacher Zhu's expression changed, filled with sorrow as he said, Ning Yuan, that's not what I meant. I. But Zhou Ning Yuan showed no interest in hearing more, turning away and preparing to leave. Just then, a series of footsteps echoed loudly. A voice filled with anger thundered, Zhoning Yuan, stop right there. Zhoning Yuan turned to see a stern-faced individual approaching. He arched an eyebrow, Lu Hao, what do you want? Chen Fei also looked over and recognized the sturdy young man at the forefront as Lu Hao, the disciplinary committee member who had reminded him earlier when he was looking at the statue. Behind Lu Hao were six or seven other youths, likely members of the disciplinary committee. Following these students were many others, curious and murmuring as they pointed and discussed. Glancing around, Chen Fei recognized some of them. Several were ordinary students who had mocked Lu Hao in front of the statue earlier. As more people gathered, the entire martial arts training ground became noisy. All eyes were on Zhoning Yuan, and various whispers and murmurs filled the air. Chapter 3645 Lu Hao walked up to Zhoning Yuan with a serious expression. Zhoning Yuan, your recent actions have violated the rules of Hua Wu Pavilion. Rules. Zhoning Yuan raised an eyebrow and smiled. Are you joking? Lu Hao remained serious and glanced at the several people behind Zhoning Yuan. The same goes for all of you. According to Article 16, Section 3 of the Rules for Students and Teachers of Hua Wu Pavilion, Students have the obligation to uphold the interests and safety of Huawu Pavilion. Your current actions are damaging the reputation of Huawu Pavilion, so you are in violation. Haha, -ha, reputation. Zhoning Yuan laughed. Lu Hao, are you still pretending to be serious in front of me? Do you find it amusing? The other students behind Zhoning Yuan also spoke up. Since when does transferring schools damage the reputation of Huawu Pavilion? When we enrolled, there was no rule against transferring, right? Lu Hao, as a member of the Student Council's Disciplinary Committee, when did you have the authority to determine if we violated any rules? Lu Hao frowned, wanting to refute. But Shoning Yuan didn't wait for him to speak and said, Lu Hao, stop spouting nonsense. In the end, you're just jealous of me. You see me joining the Stronger Lingguang Association while you have no chance, so you harbor resentment. As soon as this was said, other students echoed in agreement. Exactly, this guy has always been pretending to be righteous. In the end, it's just envy and jealousy. If given the chance, I bet he'd run faster than anyone. Lu Hao shouted, Zhoning Yuan, stop spreading rumors. The reason I intervened has nothing to do with personal factors. It's purely because I'm a member of the Student Council's Disciplinary Committee and I'm acting according to the rules and regulations. Hiki, Zhoning Yuan sneered, completely disbelieving. The students behind him echoed again. Meanwhile, members of the Student Disciplinary Committee also voiced their support for Lu Hao. For a while, both sides argued. Just then, a somewhat aged voice rang out. It wasn't loud, but it quieted down the commotion. There's no need to argue over these meaningless words. In the end, as long as we prove which of our families is stronger, that's enough. As the saying goes, water flows to the lowest point, and people strive for higher ground. It's human nature. Joe, wanting to learn stronger martial arts, shouldn't be a fault at Huawei Pavilion. Vice Pavilion Master Chin. Following the voice, Chin Xiling looked over and saw an elderly man with a hunched figure and a face full of wrinkles, wearing a hooded robe, walking out from behind Zhoning Yuan and the others. Upon closer inspection, Chin Xiling recognized the person's identity. Lingguang Association, Elder Kenny. That's right, it's me. The old man took off his hood, revealing golden hair, and looked confidently at Chin Xiling. 
Seeing this, the scene immediately became lively. What did Elder Kenny mean just now? Chin Xiling asked. Kenny chuckled, it's simple, since the debate is endless. Let them use our respective martial arts to compete and determine who is stronger, then the result will be clear at a glance. Competition. Chin Xiling narrowed her eyes. Kenny pointed to Zhoning Yuin and the others behind him, smiling. I've only been in contact with these students for less than a month, but I've given them some guidance. I see Huawu Pavilion is full of talented individuals and geniuses. You shouldn't be afraid of me casually giving pointers to these beginners. This sounds humble, but in reality, it is quite aggressive, almost making Chin Xiling unable to refuse. After all, refusing would mean admitting that disciples carefully cultivated by Huawu Pavilion are inferior to newcomers casually guided by Lingguang Club. Such a result would be a huge blow to the reputation of Huawu Pavilion. However, if agreed, things wouldn't be simple either. Zhoning Yuin, needless to say, is already the top genius of this generation in Huawu Pavilion. The others are also top-ranked talented students. Even if they are not proficient in the Lingguang Club's unique skills, their foundation is solid after all. The ordinary genius disciples of Huawu Pavilion may not necessarily defeat them. For a moment, Chin Xiling was in a dilemma. Elder Kenny, seeing this, chuckled, What's the matter, Deputy Pavilion Master Chin? Are you afraid, or is Huawu Pavilion lacking talents? With these words, the crowd instantly became excited especially the students who rushed over upon hearing the news, each one more excited than the last. Deputy Pavilion Master Chin, agree to it. I'll go first. I don't believe how powerful the Lingguang Club skills are. Defeat these traitors. As the atmosphere reached this point, even Chin Xilin couldn't refuse, only nodding in agreement. Okay, let's have a contest. Indeed worthy of Deputy Pavilion Master Chin. Kenny laughed and looked behind him, asking, Who among you will go? Several people were eager to go first, all wanting to participate. However, at this moment, Zhoning Yuin stepped forward with a smile, Elder Kenny, there's no need to trouble everyone, I alone am enough. Good, ambitious, you go. Kenny's face was full of smiles, extremely pleased. With Shoning Yuan stepping forward, the expressions of many teachers and students of Huawu Pavilion turned angry. Some furious students couldn't help but step forward directly, Traitor, I'll compete with you. As he spoke, the student's momentum exploded, and his elemental energy transformed into a large blade, slashing towards Joning Yuan. Senior Siekuan, come on, defeat the traitor. That's the nine slash flame blade taught by Teacher Chain, one of our Wawu Pavilion's unique skills. Come on. Watching this attack, Elder Kenny on the opposite side smiled. The nine slash flame blade. I've also heard of this sword technique. It's not bad. It's just that Qin Yong's strength is too weak, and his understanding is not up to par, so the technique he teaches is just SOSO. Ning Yuan. Use your agile finger to break his defense. Zhoning Yuan moved upon hearing this, channeling his elemental energy to his right hand, condensing it at his fingertips. Then, he flew towards Xie Kuen's big blade, dodging the blade's attack and continuously jabbing at it with his fingertips. With a bang, Xie Kuen's big blade was shattered, exploding. He spat out a mouthful of blood, flew backward, and fell to the ground, already injured. One move is enough. Zhoning Yuan landed, hands behind his back, looking proud. Originally enthusiastic, the scene suddenly quieted down, and everyone's faces looked rather unpleasant. After all, Xie Kuen was already somewhat famous among the students of Huawu Pavilion, with decent strength. But unexpectedly, he couldn't withstand Zhoning Yuan's one move, which surprised everyone. For a while, the scene fell silent, and no one dared to move. Seeing this, Zhoning Yuan smiled faintly, glanced around, and said lightly, Anyone else? The atmosphere tightened, 
and a burly figure stepped forward. I'll go. Joning Yuan looked at the newcomer, shaking his head gently. Lu Hao, you're not qualified yet. Qualified or not, we'll find out after we fight. Lu Hao shouted, his elemental energy erupting. Chapter 3646 Looking at the approaching Lu Hao, Zhoning Yuan shook his head and sneered, Since you seek death on your own, don't blame me for not showing any mercy as a classmate. Humph. In an instant, Zhoning Yuan moved. He flew directly forward, with the light shimmering at the tips of his fingers, pointing towards Lu Hao. This move was still the agile finger technique from before. Lu Hao knew the power of this move, so he protected his vital points with one hand and clenched his fist with the other, preparing to exchange blows with Zhoning Yuan. However, Lu Hao's bulky stature made his movements noticeably slower. Zhoning Yuan easily dodged Lu Hao's fists and pointed his fingertips at him. But Lu Hao couldn't even get close to him. In just a few breaths, Lu Hao had already been pierced by Zhoning Yuan's fingers several times, blood holes appearing one by one, blood gushing out, his condition extremely miserable. Lu Hao's face turned pale, but he still gritted his teeth and persisted. At this moment, he simply released his hands, no longer protecting himself, adopting a stance of fighting desperately. Fighting to the death. Hehe. <laughs> Zhoning Yuan sneered, took a few light steps back avoiding Lu Hao's attacks. Then, as Lu Hao's assault reached its end, he lightly flicked his fingertips. Bang. With a loud bang, Lu Hao's sturdy body flew backward, crashing to the ground, spewing out a mouthful of blood. Having dealt with Lu Hao, Zhoning Yuan put his hands behind his back, smiling as he looked at the crowd and said lightly, Anyone else? No one responded. Elder Kinney chuckled and looked at Chin Xiling, Deputy Sect Leader Chin. Shall the contest continue? Chin Xiling's face turned livid, looking very unpleasant. She pursed her lips and finally turned her gaze to Chin Fei beside her. Chin Fei understood her meaning, took a step forward, walked to Lu Hao's side, and said aloud, Do you dare to continue? At this moment, Lu Hao, covered in injuries, with a pale face, but still with a determined look in his eyes, nodded and said, As long as I'm not dead yet, I dare to continue. Good. Chin Fei nodded slightly, placed one hand on Lu Hao's body, and began to heal him with Qi. Almost at a visible speed, Lu Hao's injuries quickly improved. After a few breaths, Lu Hao stood up with a flush on his face, his aura restored, as if he hadn't been injured at all. Such a situation surprised everyone present. Joning Yuan couldn't help but turn his head to look at Elder Kinney and whispered, Elder, what's going on with that person? Kinney squinted at Chin Fei for more than 10 seconds, his brow furrowed, but he didn't speak. This young man in front of him felt very strange. His cultivation seemed to be only at the level of the fourth or fifth stage of the elemental realm, but he exuded a temperament that was difficult to fathom completely inscrutable. Elder. Joning Yuan saw Kenny not speaking and couldn't help but call out. Kenny snapped out of his thoughts and said that Lu Hao is no match for you at all. Even if his injuries have healed, it's just another defeat for him. There's no need to worry. With his injuries healed, Lu Hao, feeling grateful, looked at Chen Fei and prepared to step forward again for another round of competition. But Chen Fei stopped him. You've been practicing Iron Mountain Fist, right? Lu Hao nodded. I've been practicing Iron Mountain Fist with Teacher Hu for five years. All right, now I'll teach you Iron Mountain Fist again. Chin Fei Dao. After speaking, Chin Fei came behind Lu Hao, clasped Lu Hao's arms with both hands, and began practicing Iron Mountain Fist. Seeing such a strange scene, everyone was puzzled for a while. Is there still time for a last-minute effort? Lu Hao has been practicing for five years. Will a short while make a difference? Even if Iron Mountain Fist is practiced to the extreme, it's useless. After all, within our Wawu Pavilion, Iron Mountain Fist is only considered an intermediate-level martial art. Also, who exactly is that guy? Can he practice Iron Mountain Fist? At this moment, 
Lu Hao also felt somewhat strange. But he didn't ask questions and continued to practice as instructed. At the beginning of the practice, Lu Hao immediately noticed something unusual. His habitual use of force in both arms was controlled by Chin Fei's arms, allowing each of his movements to reach the limit and exert the strongest power. Some subtle points that were usually overlooked were also clearly perceived at this moment. And with some minor corrections, the power increased significantly. After such a set of exercises, Lu Hao felt that the power of this Iron Mountain Fist had increased by more than 30% compared to usual. Chin Fei kept moving, helping Lu Hao practice Iron Mountain Fist two more times. This time, the whole set of movements became even more perfect, with the power reaching more than twice as much as before. Finally, Chin Fei let go and encouraged Lu Hao, saying, All right. It's time to go on stage. Lu Hao looked at his own arms, nodded in salute, and then walked forward. Zhoning Yuan had been impatiently waiting for a long time, and frowned unhappily, saying, This time, three moves will defeat you. After speaking, Zhoning Yuan once again displayed his agile fingers, pointing towards Lu Hao. However, this time Lu Hao was completely different from before. He had no distractions or reservations, directly using Iron Mountain Fist to strike. What was originally a normal punch, in Zhoning Yuan's eyes this time, became extremely threatening, instantly breaking through Zhoning Yuan's agile fingers. What's going on? Zhoning Yuan was somewhat surprised. And Lu Hao's punches kept coming, continuing to attack. Zhoning Yuan made several moves in succession, but his agile fingers were continuously broken by the opponent. This time, everyone was shocked. Elder Kinney's face also changed, and he shouted, Use Falling Leaf Dance. This was also a unique skill of the Lingguang society, known for its agility and unparalleled body movement. However, Lu Hao remained unyielding, using a set of Iron Mountain Fist to strike. Boom, boom, boom. The power of Iron Mountain Fist became stronger and stronger, forcing Zhoning Yuan into disarray, unable to use the so-called Falling Leaf Dance technique, continuously retreating. Cloud Palm. Broken. Mountain Wind Call. Broken. Lingguang Sword Technique. Broken. Under Kenny's reminder, Zhoning Yuan successively used his own learned Lingguang Society unique skills, but in the end, they were all broken by Lu Hao's Iron Mountain Fist. Finally, with a punch, Zhoning Yuan was hit, flying out, spitting out a mouthful of blood. At this moment, Lu Hao stood firm and said, Zhoning Yuan, you've lost. Jin Xiling finally smiled on her face, Elder Kinney, do you still want to continue? Elder Kinney's face turned iron blue. He glanced at the several people behind him and said in a deep voice, you guys, go up. Elder, we. Several disciples' faces changed drastically. After all, their strength was inferior to Zhoning Yuan's, and they couldn't possibly be opponents to Lu Hao at the moment. If you don't go up, then don't enter my Lingguang society, Kenny said coldly. Several people reluctantly stepped forward. However, the result was obvious. Lu Hao still defeated all these disciples with just one set of Iron Mountain Fist. Defeating seven or eight opponents alone, this result was unexpected for everyone present. Jin Xiling couldn't help but burst into laughter. Elder Kenny, you've lost. Now, what should you do? Chapter 3647 Facing the questioning, Elder Kenny's expression changed several times, and finally he managed to squeeze out a sentence. I'm willing to admit defeat. Since I lost, I won't accept these disciples into the Lingguang society. After speaking, Elder Kinney turned around, ready to leave with a flick of his sleeves. This time, before Chen Xiling could react, the defeated students and parents of Zhoning Yuan started to clamor. Elder Kinney, you promised to accept mining Yuan into the society, along with those rewards. Yes, you can't go back on your word. How can you do this? This is harming us, isn't it? No, you must give us an explanation, 
Otherwise, this matter won't be over. Kenny glanced at the noisy parents, his aura trembling, and directly shook these parents away, warning in a cold voice, Shut up, all of you. Anyone who dares to interfere again, don't blame me for being rude. Immediately, the parents and students fell silent. Although they were full of anger on their faces, they didn't dare to say anything. After all, Kenny was an elder of the Lingguang Society, a super powerful martial artist at the sixth level of the elemental soul realm. He could almost crush these parents and students with just one finger. Seeing Kenny about to leave, the angry and helpless parents could only withdraw their gazes and turn to the direction of Huawu Pavilion. Joining Yuan's parents forced a smile, rubbing their hands, Deputy Master Chen, minding Yuan was just momentarily confused by outsiders. Now, we understand that Huawu Pavilion is still the best. We won't withdraw, is that okay? Other students and parents nodded one after another, echoing. My family won't withdraw either. After all, we are Chinese, Huawu Pavilion is the best. Yes, Huawu Pavilion is the most powerful. Facing these fickle people, Chin Xiling hesitated slightly and cast a seeking look at Chin Fei. Chin Fei understood his junior sister's thoughts. After all, this group of people were talented students of Huawu Pavilion. Letting them go easily would be a significant loss for Huawu Pavilion. That's why Chin Xiling personally intervened earlier to persuade them. But now, if they were really kept, the talented students would be retained. However, it would be unfair to students like Liu Hao who had been loyal to Huawu Pavilion. It might even exacerbate internal conflicts among the students and cause turmoil throughout Huawu Pavilion. So, Chin Xiling found it difficult to make a decision for a while. Chin Fei looked at his junior sister and said lightly, Huawu Pavilion doesn't keep traitors. With these words, Chin Xiling understood Chin Fei's meaning and nodded slightly, saying coldly to Zhoning Yuan and the others, from this moment on, Huawu Pavilion officially expels you. You are no longer members of Huawu Pavilion. Whoosh. The parents and students suddenly became noisy. Deputy Master Chin, I really know I was wrong. Can you give me another chance? Teacher Huang, you know, my child is really talented. This time it was just a small mistake. We are powerful. It's also a loss for Huawu Pavilion to let us go. Faced with various pleas, Chen Xiling remained resolute. My decision is made. Seeing that they couldn't persuade Chen Xiling, these parents suddenly changed their expressions, one by one, angrily muttering curses under their breath. Fine, if you want to leave, just leave. My child is very talented. Even if we're not in Huawu Pavilion, there are other places. Yes, there's Kahimei, the Holy Knights, they're all very powerful. I don't believe we can't find another place to go. Huawu Pavilion is just second-rate anyway, heh. <laughs> After speaking, these parents surrounded their children and walked away. At this moment, Elder Kenny, who had already left the martial arts arena, noticed the commotion behind him. His eyes lit up with an idea. Huawu Pavilion doesn't want these little guys. It seems like the Lingguang Society can accept them. Although it's not as good as before in terms of face, after all, their talents are not bad. And, after this defeat, the conditions for recruiting them can also be lowered, saving a lot of effort. With this in mind, Elder Kenny's eyes brightened. He turned around and began to plan how to bring these people into the fold. Just as he was contemplating this good fortune, a cold voice rang out. Wait a minute. The students and parents turned around at the words. They saw Chen Fei walking out expressionlessly and saying lightly, Leaving Huawu Pavilion is fine, but before you leave, you must return what Huawu Pavilion has given you. The crowd's expressions changed. What do you mean? What are you trying to do? Chen Fei said, It's simple. The martial arts cultivation of all of you is provided by Huawu Pavilion. Now, you're leaving. Just abolish your martial arts cultivation. The scene suddenly exploded. Abolish our cultivation? Are you kidding me? We cultivated our martial arts bit by bit ourselves, and now you're giving all the credit to Huawu Pavilion. 
You're too overbearing. I absolutely won't agree. I've never heard of any school where you have to return what you've learned when you drop out. Facing the excited students and parents, Chin Fei remained indifferent. I've investigated. You guys, after enrolling, not only were provided with martial arts resources, but even the living materials for yourselves and your family members were provided by Huawu Pavilion. So, you're not ordinary students. You were nurtured by Huawu Pavilion. Now, returning them is only natural. The group of parents and students continued to argue. However, Chen Fei didn't come to argue with them. With a light tap of his finger, seven or eight streaks of light shot out accurately into the dantian of those traitorous students. Crack, crack, crack. With several cracking sounds, these students suddenly clutched their stomachs, their faces turning pale. Their dantians were shattered by Chen Fei, and all their cultivation vanished in an instant. Now, you can leave, Chen Fei said lightly. You. Zhoning Yuan and others stared at Chen Fei with resentment, wanting to curse at him. But sensing the aura emanating from Chen Fei, they all held back and quickly left the martial arts arena. At the entrance, Kenny, who had planned for something good, was stunned when he saw this, then shook his head and quickly left. However, Kenny hadn't gone far when a figure appeared in front of him blocking his way. Kenny squinted and recognized the person blocking him as the young man who had just made a move, seemingly called Chen Fei. Mr. Chen, what do you mean by this? Chen Fei looked at Kenny and said lightly, poaching from Huawu Pavilion must come with a price. A price. Kenny raised his eyebrows, his aura surging, already assuming a combat stance, young man, do you want to fight me? But it would be more appropriate if Deputy Master Chen handled this. You, in front of me, are not qualified. Kenny was extremely confident. His aura of the sixth level of the elemental soul realm burst forth, like a surging little sun, enveloping and oppressing Chen Fei. Chen Fei didn't waste words. He raised his right hand and slapped towards Kenny. A palm fell. Smack. Without any obstruction, the formidable elder Kenny was directly slapped to the ground, blood gushing out, looking extremely miserable, with only a trace of breath left. I'll spare your life. Go back and tell the Lingguang society that if there's a next time, it will be extermination. Leaving behind this cold remark, Chen Fei turned and left. Chapter 3648 Back at the martial arts arena, Chen Fei was immediately surrounded by a group of enthusiastic students, all clamoring for Chin Fei to guide their cultivation. Chin Fei took a look at these students, then glanced at Chin Xiling, who was standing aside with a mischievous grin, and immediately knew she was behind this. However, Chin Fei didn't hold back either. He patiently provided one on one guidance to the students. After the guidance, the students tried it out on the spot and all found that their martial arts prowess had greatly increased, leaving them all delighted especially the members of the discipline committee led by Lu Hao, under Chen Fei's special attention, progressed rapidly, almost reaching the level of Zhoning Yuan. After finishing the guidance, Chen Fei and Chen Xiling left the martial arts arena, then went around to other places, chatting as they walked, getting a clear picture of the current situation of Huawu Pavilion. Finally, as the sky darkened, Chen Fei bid farewell and left. As he reached the door, Chen Fei was surprised to find Lu Hao, along with a group of students he had just guided, respectfully seeing him off at the door. After exchanging greetings with the students, Chen Fei left Huawu Pavilion. In the gradually darkening night, the students watched Chen Fei's departure straight until he completely disappeared. Let's go, back to the dormitory. I just realized, Mr. Chen's back looks a bit like Master Chen's on the statue. Ah. Oh, it does look quite alike. The more I look, the more it resembles. And, Mr. Chin seems to have the same name as Master Chin. Uh, his relationship with Deputy Master Chin is also good. Could it be? What are you guys thinking? Master Chin left Earth decades ago and went to the elemental realm. How could he possibly appear here? Yeah, even if Master Chin came back, he wouldn't look like the one on the statue now. 
Stop daydreaming. We've had a long day today. Let's go back and rest well. Early the next morning, Su Momo took little Yujing out. She was planning to take Yujing to handle her identity documents and officially adopt her. After all, this little girl had amnesia and couldn't remember her origins clearly. Following Su Momo, she needed to have an identity. So, Su Momo decided to adopt Yujing as her daughter. Just shortly after the two left, two well dressed figures silently followed them, tracking Su Momo all the way to the registration hall. Have you found out the specific information? Who is that woman? The elder among them asked. The younger one spoke up, Brother Lu, we found out. That woman is called Su Momo. She's a famous internet celebrity with quite a few fans. Internet celebrity? No matter. Let's just take action directly and grab her. I think that girl is pretty good too. It would be even better to take her with us. The elder wiped his nose, looking eager. The younger one hurriedly said, Brother Lu, let me finish. This Su Momo is not just an ordinary internet celebrity. She has a close relationship with the Autumn Group and also has connections with Huawu Pavilion. Her background is extraordinary. Such a person is not easy to deal with. The Autumn Group, Huawu Pavilion. The elder frowned. What should we do then? Give up. The younger one whispered. I just cleared up the information and informed the boss. The boss said he contacted Duan, the manager from Night Heaven Pavilion. Duan said that Night Heaven Pavilion values that little girl and will send professional personnel to cooperate with us. Night Heaven Pavilion, professional personnel. The elder scoffed, isn't it just a bunch of thugs and muscle? You say that in front of me, that's fine. But when the people from Night Heaven Pavilion arrive, you better not talk nonsense. They're not someone we can afford to mess with. The elder waved his hand, you're teaching me now? Of course, I know. Then let's continue to keep an eye on them. The younger one said. While these two were surveilling, a call came to Chen Fei's phone. Xiling, what's up? Chen Fei asked. Xiling said, Brother, the people I sent to protect Momo have sent back a message. They said that for the past two days, two people have been following Momo, and their intentions may not be good. Huh. Chen Fei raised an eyebrow, people from the Yi family? It's probably not. According to the information we've gathered so far, they are just ordinary people. So, I've instructed them to stand by for now and wait for the other party to make a move. Xiling said, Chin Fei nodded slightly, keep an eye on it, and let me know if there's any problem. Got it, brother. Half a day later, in the afternoon, Su Momo, with Yu Jing, went out after completing the procedures, indulged in some shopping, and then prepared to find a place to eat. Just behind them, a black car quietly followed. The two in front were the elder brother Lu and the younger one who had been tracking them before. In the back seat, there were two young men dressed in flashy suits with wild hairstyles, one red and one yellow, resembling two roosters with their feathers ruffled. The two were smoking, with their legs resting on the front seat, exhaling smoke leisurely. Yellow hair took a drag and said, Is it the one in front? Yes, the short-haired woman with the girl beside her. Brother Lou turned his head with a pleasing smile. Red hair's eyes lit up. She's quite young, and she looks pretty good. I'm getting excited. Let's try her out. Don't mess around. Duan said that the little girl is reserved for the VIPs, and it's not something we can touch. Damn, all the good stuff goes to those guys. We should be able to play with whatever's left. Red hair looked dissatisfied, kicking the back of the seat. Brother Lu almost flew out of the window in front, but he dared not get angry. Yellow hair glanced at red hair and said, the woman beside her is not bad either. She's also a top-notch figure. Suddenly, red hair's gaze fell on Su Momo, his eyes showing a smirk, not bad at all. We'll have some fun with her later. Yellow hair reminded, don't underestimate her. According to the information, that woman is related to Huawu Pavilion and may have martial artists protecting her. Just a bunch of outdated rubbish. Nothing worth mentioning. 
red hair, with a cigarette in his mouth, looked disdainful. Just as Yellow Hair was about to say something, at that moment, someone walked over and lightly tapped on the car window. What are you knocking for? Brother Lou didn't have much patience for dealing with ordinary people. He lowered the window and roared angrily, What do you want? To catch you. The window tapper said coldly, flicking his right hand lightly. The two in the front instantly passed out. Seeing this, red hair and yellow hair in the back immediately turned pale. It's a martial artist. Attack. However, before they could react, two big hands reached into the car, grabbed their necks, and made them instantly lose their ability to resist, pulling them out of the car. Take them to Mr. Chin. Yes. This little incident on the side of the road almost didn't attract any attention. Everything went on as usual, bustling and calm. Chapter 3649 Red hair and yellow hair were taken into a spacious room and thrown onto the cold floor. The two immediately got up, their chi bursting forth, looking wary at the few people in front of them. Where are you guys from? I'm under manager Duan in Haida City. Yellow hair spoke up. No one asked you. Shut up. The other party was not polite. This time, red hair was furious. He gritted his teeth. I'm not afraid to tell you. Behind our manager Duan, there's someone you can't afford to mess with. If you guys know what's good for you, let us go now or else. I told you to shut up. Don't you understand? With a smack, a man stepped forward and kicked red hair to the ground. You son of a... Red hair was furious, wanting to retaliate. But the opponent was faster, stepping on red hair's left leg. With a crisp crack, he crippled red hair's left leg, causing him to collapse on the ground, screaming in pain. Seeing this, yellow hair's expression changed. This footwork, you, you're from Huawu Pavilion. Oh, you have some insight. The man said. We have no grudge against Huawu Pavilion. I don't know why you attacked us. Yellow hair spoke up. No grudge. The man sneered, looking at the two. What are you up to? Don't you understand what's going on? Yellow hair's face changed as he realized something. And red hair's violent temper made him shout while lying on the ground. So what if it's Huawu Pavilion? I'm not afraid to tell you. Behind manager Duan, there are experts from the elemental realm supporting us, who you can't afford to mess with. The Elemental Realm. The man's expression changed slightly. Red hair was about to shout something else. Just then, footsteps sounded. The man immediately stood up straight, showing respect, and bowed, Mr. Chin, the people you wanted are inside. Then, a seemingly ordinary young man walked into the room. Naturally, it was Chin Fei. Chin Fei glanced at the two in the room and asked, Did you find out anything? The man said, Mr. Chin, these two are under manager Duan of Night Heaven Pavilion in Haida City. They also said that behind Night Heaven Pavilion, there are experts from the Elemental Realm supporting them. Haida City, Elemental Realm. Chin Fei's face changed slightly, showing some surprise. Seeing this, Red Hair thought Chin Fei was scared and hurriedly said, Let me tell you, the big boss of Night Heaven Pavilion is on Earth. If you anger them, not just you few, even your entire Huawu Pavilion will be destroyed. Oh. Chen Fei's eyelids twitch as he approached Red Hair. It seems like you know quite a bit. Then, spill everything you know. I. Red Hair wanted to say something, but Chen Fei lightly touched his fingertip, and a streak of light entered Red Hair's body. I don't like to waste time. You speak for yourself. You can't. I. Red Hair was still stubborn. But. As he said a few words, his face suddenly changed drastically. The chi in his body began to surge wildly, causing red hair to scream in pain. This is just the beginning. Continuing this afternoon, I can make you endure three days and three nights without dying, but you'll wish you were dead. Chen Fei said indifferently. Ah, ah. Red hair screamed in agony, but in just a short ten seconds, he couldn't bear it anymore. I'll talk. I'll talk. That's right. Chin Fei smiled, about to let red hair speak. 
However, suddenly thinking of something, he glanced at yellow hair beside him. Right? Take him downstairs. I'll question them separately later. If anyone tells lies, well, hee hee. Yellow hair shivered and was then dragged away. The next steps were quite simple. Chin Fei personally questioned them, asking about the entire situation from beginning to end. After questioning red hair, Chin Fei repeated the same process with yellow hair. Finally, comparing the testimonies of the two men, the whole situation was clarified. Speaking of which, the matter was quite simple. It was related to the little girl, Yu Jing. Previously, it was said that the little girl was deceived by a so-called talent scouting company and later escaped on her own. That talent scouting company was secretly involved in these deceitful flesh trade businesses. When the boss discovered Yu Jing, he considered her a valuable commodity. So, after taking photos and gathering information, he personally went to Haida City to find the largest red light business there, the Night Heaven Pavilion, to market his goods. Unexpectedly, the manager of the Night Heaven Pavilion in Haida City had a bigger reaction than he anticipated. He immediately took a liking to Yu Jing and offered a hefty price, instructing the boss to send her over quickly. With such a big opportunity in hand, the boss of the talent scouting company naturally felt extremely excited and hurried back. However, he found out that the little girl had escaped. So, he immediately sent people to track her down, and eventually, following the clues, they found Su Momo here. Originally, the boss of the talent scouting company planned to let his men personally snatch the little girl back. After all, in his line of work, he had some martial artists under his command, so dealing with such matters was routine. However, after investigating, he was surprised to find out that Su Momo had an extraordinary background and they might not be able to handle her. So, he reported the matter to the manager of the Night Heaven Pavilion. After scolding him, the manager promised to send skilled martial artists to solve the problem. These so-called experts naturally referred to red hair and yellow hair before them. These two men were indeed quite capable reaching the second stage of the elemental soul realm. Such a realm, placed elsewhere, would be sufficient to be a big shot in any other place. But here they were just lackeys in the Night Heaven Pavilion, which also indicated the Night Heaven Pavilion's influence was even greater than what was seen on the surface. With the matter clarified, the next step was how to deal with it. Chin Fei and Su Momo met and discussed the matter. Momo listened, feeling both angry and frustrated. After all, Yu Jing was now her goddaughter. Brother-in-law, those guys must not be let off. We can't let them continue harming others. Chen Fei nodded gently, saying, then I'll personally go to Haida City to see who's behind the Night Heaven Pavilion. Brother, I'll go with you, Su Momo said. Chen Fei initially wanted to refuse, but after a moment of thought, he nodded and said, all right. I, I want to go too. Just as the two were about to get up, Yu Jing, the little girl, walked in without them noticing. Sis, it's too dangerous, you. Su Momo said. Yu Jing looked resolute, saying, I, I want to go. Su Momo wanted to persuade her, but Chin Fei stared at the little girl for a few seconds, pondered slightly, and nodded. All right, then let's go together. Sis. This is too dangerous, Su Momo worriedly said. Chin Fei shook his head gently. What? Don't you trust your brother-in-law's strength? It's not that, but... All right, there's nothing to worry about. Leaving Yu Jing in the capital might bring other troubles. Chin Fei said. Uh, all right then. Su Mom finally nodded. Without wasting any time, that same afternoon, they boarded a plane and headed to Haida City. Chapter 3650 Upon arriving in Haida City, wasting no time, Chin Fei threw red hair and yellow hair in front of him and ordered, lead the way. Along the way, the two had already witnessed Chin Fei's strength fully and had no thought of resisting at all. An hour and a half later, the group arrived in front of a five-story building. By now, 
night had fallen, and the lights of the building were brilliant, with various neon lights flashing, creating a colorful display that formed the words Night Heaven Pavilion. At the entrance, various luxury cars were arriving one after another, and well-dressed guests, accompanied by glamorous women, entered the shop. Let's go in. Chen Fei led the way towards the storefront. Upon reaching the entrance, two obvious martial artists acting as security guards cast wary glances. Sir, are you a new customer? Chen Fei remained silent, while red hair and yellow hair behind him stepped forward. When did you become so talkative? The guards obviously recognized the two, immediately changing their expression and apologizing. I'm sorry. I didn't know you two were friends of his. I. All right. Cut the crap. Move aside. Red hair impatiently interrupted. The guard quickly stepped aside, respectfully ushering the group into the store. Although the two saw that red hair and yellow hair seemed to have injuries on their faces, they felt somewhat strange, but due to their different statuses, they didn't dare to ask much. Entering the store and turning a corner, they found a nearly 200-square-meter dance floor. In the dim light, passionate men and women were crowded together with a lively atmosphere. As soon as Chin Fei and his group entered, they instantly attracted the attention of many people. Especially the two beautiful women, Su Momo and Yu Jing, who followed behind Chin Fei, made many men's eyes light up. Some bolder ones touched their hair, preparing to approach and strike up a conversation. May I have the pleasure of buying you a drink, beautiful lady? A slick young man, holding a glass of red wine, squeezed out a greasy smile and approached Su Momo. Get lost. Su Momo was not polite at all. You. The man was about to get angry when yellow hair glared at him. Hutong, don't cause trouble, get lost, another man said beside him. The man was a regular at the nightclub and obviously knew yellow hair. Sensing something was amiss, he reluctantly backed away. The group crossed the dance floor, passed the bar, and headed towards the elevator on the side. At the elevator entrance, there were also two security guards standing. To the fifth floor, Launchy Hall, yellow hair ordered. The security guards' faces changed slightly, showing some difficulty, yellow, Launchy Hall is full at the moment, so it might not be convenient now. How about you change to another hall? Yellow Hair frowned, about to find some excuse. At this moment, Chen Fei said lightly, Is your manager on the fifth floor? Uh. The security guard hesitated for a moment but nodded in response, Manager Duan is receiving distinguished guests on the fifth floor. That's enough. Take us to the fifth floor. Chen Fei stepped forward. The security guard intercepted, gentlemen, please hold on. Chin Fei landed a step, a burst of energy directly pushing the two security guards aside and entered the elevator, heading upstairs. The staggered security guard stabilized his pace and quickly opened the intercom to report, Manager Duan, there's trouble. Someone is forcing their way to the fifth floor. Soon, they reached the fifth floor. As soon as the elevator door opened, Chen Fei saw a group of martial artists dressed in security uniforms, fierce and sinister, guarding the door. One of them, the scar-faced leader, glared fiercely and swept his gaze over the crowd. When he saw yellow hair and red hair, he narrowed his eyes. You two dare to betray Manager Duan? Do you want to die? Yellow hair and red hair's faces changed, wanting to explain. But when they thought of Chen Fei beside them, their words changed course, Scarface, this matter has escalated. It's not something you can handle. Let Manager Duan come over. Escalated. Nonsense. Scarface spat, drew out a large knife, and rushed over, kill. A group of martial artists rushed over aggressively. Obviously, these people were not weak in strength, mostly ranging from the 7th to 8th level of the elemental realm to the 1st level of the elemental soul realm. Scarface, in particular, was formidable, reaching the third level of the elemental soul realm, one level higher than yellow hair and red hair. Such strength was already equivalent to a medium-sized martial arts hall. However, 
as they approached the elevator, with Chin Fei taking a light step forward. An invisible force instantly burst out from the elevator, like a wave, directly blasting these martial artists away, crashing into the walls on both sides of the corridor with a loud bang. The one in the front, Scarface, suffered the greatest impact. His sturdy body was directly thrown high up and flew more than 20 meters before crashing heavily to the ground with a resounding boom. One step, defeating the enemy, Chin Fei led the others out of the elevator. Red hair and yellow hair followed behind, exchanging a glance filled with astonishment and fear. They had known Chin Fei was formidable before, but now, in this actual combat situation, Chin Fei's strength exceeded their expectations. The two swallowed hard, exchanging glances. Fortunately, we chose to surrender, otherwise we'd be doomed. Now it seems that betrayal may not have been a wrong choice. Although the private rooms on the fifth floor were soundproofed well, the commotion in the corridor was still too loud, which alarmed many of the distinguished guests in the private rooms. What's going on? You've ruined my mood. Manager Duan, what the hell is going on? I bring friends here to spend money, and this is how you welcome me. Damn it, I was just getting in the mood, and you ruined it in an instant. Through the room door, Shin Fei swept a glance. He could see various exquisitely decorated private rooms. Nearly naked, beautiful women were being toyed with and played with in various ways. These bastards. Sumomo, upon seeing this, quickly covered Yojing's eyes, then, with a look of anger and gritted teeth, she said. Chin Fei waved his hand, and several streams of light flew out, hitting the abdomen of those guests. Instantly, waves of painful screams rang out one after another. Continuing forward, stepping towards the deepest part of the corridor, also the most luxurious private room in the entire Night Heaven Pavilion, Lanchi Hall. Before reaching the door, the room door opened, and a middle-aged man wearing a burgundy suit with a big back head walked out with a face full of anger, cursing. What the hell are you doing? I'm entertaining guests, and you. Before he finished speaking, the man saw Chen Fei and his group coming towards him, as well as the seven or eight security guards behind him, and the guests clutching their crotches, wailing in pain. His eyelids trembled, and his anger surged. This. However, his experience in the circle made him realize that the situation was unusual. He forcefully suppressed the killing intent in his heart, squeezed out a smile, and looked at yellow hair and red hair. A huang, a hong. Is this your friend? Why didn't you tell me in advance? Red hair and yellow hair dared not speak. 